What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. As always, each and every episode is brought to you by All I Need. If you are in need of a new skateboard or some apparel, please check out allineedskate.com. We have All I Need skateboards, we have World Industry boards, and our new brand, Spare Skateboards, up on the site now. We also have an epic apparel collection. Again, please check out allineedskate.com for all your skateboard and apparel needs. Our guest today is young Steven Stanton. I've seen Steven around for years, had many sessions with him at skate parks and skate jams. He's always ripping with a good attitude. Uh, I finally reached out to see if he wanted to come chop it up on the podcast. He agreed, and uh, we talked all about skating, skate jams. We talked about him joining the army, a little bit about his family life. I really enjoyed hanging out with Steven. He is the man. If you enjoyed this podcast, hit the share button or tell a friend about the show. Thank you. All right. Hell yeah. We're lock and loaded, Steven. We are. First podcast ever. Ever. Hell yeah. (laughs) Dude, it's been so long for me. My first one was like over a decade ago. (laughs) I've been doing this podcast for about a decade, 12 years. That's sick though. Yeah. I watched a bunch of episodes. Hell yeah. I see the homies come on here and I've been like waiting, but like. It's good to finally be here. Hell yeah. I know we see each other. We skate with each other at Edge and then like all over New England at skate parks and stuff. At contests. Yeah, contests. We see each other and we get to say hi and talk. Sometimes we talk for like five, ten minutes, but it's never like sit down and just like shoot the shit, you know? Yeah, it's the first time. That's why I like doing the podcast because you like carve out a space just to shoot the shit. Yeah, and you've been watching me skate for a while. It's been a long time, dude. (laughs) A very long time. For sure. Wait, so how old are you? 23 nice i'm 40 i'll be 41 in november are you excited yeah i'm stoked i'm I'm stoked i'm i made it to 40 fuck yeah i was pretty happy i made it to 18 and then 21 yeah and i turned 24 in july nice 23 is a good age jordan bro yeah 23 23 is a good age i feel like i've grown up more in the age of 23 than i have any other in my 20s that's dope yeah that's a good sign i mean i spent most of it uh well most of my 22s in uh the army and then like half of my 23s and then i got out and then how'd how'd that happen uh just my contract ran out no i mean how'd you get involved in the first place like where'd the idea come from how did it happen how do you even go about doing that oh like three or like three or four years ago i was like in a really rough spot again and that's when i was just like you know what you know my mom talked to me about it and you know i always wanted to kind of try it out and then I was just like, instead of just saying I want to do it. What was your mom saying about it? She wanted me to do it. She wanted me to have some structure in my life. She used to do like ROTC. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. In college. That's sick. So she had some experience. And then, um, yeah, she just wanted me to do it. Go out and explore. Yeah. Just try new things. Good advice. Or like good to nudge your kid towards. Yeah. Yeah. She's always been super supportive with any of my decisions. Yeah, man. Because part of life is like. If you raise a kid and you're a parent, it's part of the part of it is letting them go and fall on their face and figure shit out, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like skateboarding, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to incorporate skating. What, army? Uh, anything, like yeah. parenting, the military, like day-to-day life. I do that too. It all comes back to skateboarding somehow. Yeah, it's like a, it comes full circle. Skateboarding has yeah. like always been there. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, so super So sick. that's cool. So your mom wanted to, and did you want to? Yeah, nice. I, I came to the decision where I was like, I need some discipline. Like, I just need to prove to myself that, you know, I'm I'm better than what I'm doing right now. And, you know, I can't just be like a another like normal person that's going downhill. Do you, uh, how'd you do in school? I, not good. <laughs> <laughs> I, Didn't have discipline and structure then? <laughs> no, <Damn>. so, <laughs> no, no. Like, I was super smart. And that's your opinion, everybody, bro. everybody okay. told me, yeah, no, I was super smart. It's just, I have like really bad anxiety yeah. and, um, girl, going to school, like it was hard. Cause, um, I just, I went through a lot like growing up. So it was like a lot of that trans, like, uh, transferred into school, like a lot of my anger. Oh yeah. I can relate to that. At least yeah. in middle school, middle school, I had anger school. issues and I didn't even want to be there. I just slept all the fucking time. Yeah, I would, like, sneak out of school. 
fight yeah. a lot. Yeah, I fought too. I got into yeah, stupid yeah. fights. You're like, what the fuck am I doing? Arguing with authority and stuff. Like, yeah. it was bad. Like, I hated authority growing up. Yeah, yeah. Which is odd because, like, then I went into the military where it's all authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um... It's good to know both, though. Yeah, it is. It's really good to know. I, I grew up with the fact that, um... Like, my belief was that we're all human, you know? So it's like, just because somebody's older than me... Like, I get respect your elders, but, like... I hated when people assumed that I wasn't smart because they were older than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really street smart and book smart. It's just, I didn't want to apply it in school because I never really felt like school was for me. Like, a lot of my life, I never really felt like uh, like I fit in. And I didn't, so it was it was fine. Like, I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Um, I dealt with a lot of, like, racism growing up, and a lot of people might think and wonder why is like a lot of people don't know i'm actually native and black so like I, i'm mixed native what's native what native american oh like yeah yeah, yeah okay. like uh my my tribe is narragansett so like local Whoa. yeah so that's wild yeah it is pretty cool and um i don't know it's just there's so much growing up where it's just kind of like damn like fuck everything fuck everybody i was so alone but i kind of like that you know i kind of i kind of glad i didn't have like a big friend group it taught me to study people, and so when I studied people, that's when I started to figure out who's, like, actually real. Like, who can be a good person to me and yeah. benefit my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. What's your, yeah. mo- what's your mom and dad? What's their situation? Uh, my mom has been in my life my whole life. My dad, nah, he's, um, I don't really call him my dad anymore. Um, he's just, uh, not the best person, you know? He, uh... He not he didn't do the best at parenting, but my mom, uh, my mom's been solid, biggest supporter. That's it. Always, yeah, always been there for me. Yeah. So at least I had like one consistent like support in my life. Yeah, I get that. The oh. more healthy adults around you, like, just is a good thing, you know. Yeah. People that show up, keep their word, do their thing, you know. Carry yeah. Their weight, responsibility. My dad definitely wasn't responsible. Um, he he did his best um he wouldn't he was locked up a lot um but when he was out he just never he never tried it felt like he didn't really care and i i don't really talk to him like i haven't talked to him like over a year now yeah so sometimes you gotta give each other space figure it out maybe down the road you know yeah it was like that my whole life though he wouldn't talk to me for a few years then i'd get like a birthday card or or something yeah um but yeah he's uh not the best but my mom has been solid yeah, that's sick. Yeah, she was raising me and my uh, older sister. Like, uh, when we were growing up in the project, she was the one raising us. And now I got five sisters. Yeah, dang, sick. Yeah, no brothers. Damn, all women? Yeah, <laughs> a mom and five sisters. <laughs> yeah, dude. I had three sisters and my mom, and then a brother. Oh, it must have been yeah. nice to have a brother. I wish was, I had a brother. Yeah, dude, I love my brother. He's the man. He likes it, skating, too. Yeah, Sam, right? Yeah, Sam loves skating. Yeah, I see him on Instagram. He's I'll actually coming home pretty soon, so I'm going to hang out with him. I think uh, July. July? Yeah, he'll be oh. bouncing around. That's sick. You should film and edit. Yeah, yeah. We'll be skating, for sure. What, oh. um, how'd you get into skating? Uh, okay, so, like, there's a few different things I got into skating. There was, like, um, there was a TV show that got me into skating. Nice. There was two TV shows. Um, one was Kick Patowski. I don't know if anybody knows that. Never heard of it. But it was like this little daredevil kid and like his main thing was a skateboard. Hell yeah. So like I used to just watch him do like the most crazy things like bomb a hill and do like a like a triple flip down the hill that's like at like going a hundred miles per hour. Is it an animation? Yeah. Yeah, sick. So it was super it was super funny. And then uh there was another one called Zeke and Luther hmm. and that was like another like Looking back on it, it was kind of, like, corny because, like, I thought they were skating, but it was really just stunt doubles. But yeah, it kind of, like, got me into skateboarding. And then, um, like, I used to see people skate uh, a lot growing up, kind of, around my uh, town. Yeah, it wasn't sure. very popular. Uh, Where'd you grow popular. up? Uh, Park Home, like, in Newport. Oh, right, right. So, like, Park Home, Newport Heights, and, and um, a few places in Middletown. Nice. But um, I would see, like, a few people skating. And I just thought it was super cool. So, like, I got a board. I always liked, like, kind of going super fast. Yeah. Like, yeah. I had a ripstick just at one in point. General, just yeah. in general. Just I want to go fast. Yeah, I don't like going <laughs> slow. And um, 
Like even when I had Heelys, I would bomb bomb a hill on Did Heelys. You have Heelys. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with wheels, man. All but a bike. Like I I I think I owned one bike and I barely rode it. So sk- skateboarding was the thing, man. Like the thing. Like I remember I was bombing a hill on my Heelys and I got worked. <laughs> <laughs> like it was bummer. it was like it was really bad and then like you're on uh, your heels and you're just going a little too fast you're like it's a slam or i have to somehow ride this it, it was a slam <laughs> like i slid like a good like 10 feet nice yeah it was like at the start that and like i was going straight into a main road so i really didn't know what i was thinking at yeah. the time i was just kind of like i kind of like the feeling of going fast and just get into shit you're like we're doing those heelys <laughs> yeah so like my first board was a walmart board that um my mom got me and then my uncle johnny he did an ollie and snapped it in half and i was heartbroken (laughs) yeah that happened i broke my brother's board one time and i think he cried about it (laughs) yeah i was super (laughs) young (laughs) i was probably like nine or ten at the time so then i kind of like gave up my skating career Uh. and for like two years and then um i got back into it again like once i started having a little bit more anxiety um once i got diagnosed i stopped playing a lot of school sports like i stopped playing soccer and doing cross country how were you at uh, soccer uh i was really good Hell yeah. it was the best team you won a lot um i was really small though i was like four foot eight four foot eleven in high school like i didn't weigh that much how tall are you now uh, five five ten congratulations five ten you thank you <laughs> i know <laughs> five ten according to the military Hell so yeah. five nine if if my mom says five nine, I but the military they took the tape measure out when you got there, and I was like, eh. yeah, and I had a shaved head, so they can't count my hair for being my height. <laughs> a very shaved head, bald. Yeah, yeah. There you go, man. It was terrible <laughs> in the middle of winter. But yeah. but yeah, I started skating like seriously, like when I was like twelve, thirteen. Oh, sick! I started around then too. Yeah, well, going into thirteen. Yeah, it was super, it was super interesting because, um, where we lived, there was, like, no skate spots, so, like, do you remember Greenside? Yeah, crazy. I, everybody that knows Greenside, shout out to them because so, that was the spot. The ramps were so big. They were huge, especially for little old me, like, when I was yeah. first starting out, and it would be, like, me, Weller, Weller, I skated with Weller Dude, a lot. You can tell he grew up skating there. Dude, him and Franklin were sick. Yeah. And Weller's still sick, and Franklin is still pretty sick. Like, I still see them skating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weller's ripping, dude. For Weller sure. is ripping. And I've seen Frank online. I haven't seen him in a little bit, but I'm sure he's skating still. Yeah, he's definitely skating. Ripper. But uh, Weller was really good. Like, him and Franklin were really good back in the day. Like, when we started skating at Greenside, Yeah. Hell it yeah. would be me, him, and then one of our boys, Ethan, and then it would be our boy, Darian. But he kind of stopped skating. I see him every once in a while in Newport yeah but people go in and out of it yeah it's crazy i can't i can't never forget greenside greenside is like where i was cooked that was the lab that yeah. was like where i started to like i was like big stuff like that's where i started jumping down stuff like yeah. that staircase was like the first staircase i ever ollied that's sick yeah and if i could find the old clips of of me skating greenside like i found them like five or six years ago and like they just made me so happy like, yeah, i got miss greenside yeah. it's so sick when you have like um Especially in the East Coast, you have an indoor skate park. You can just keep skating, you know? Yeah. You have, like, a local. It's the best. Because other than that, we had, like, the first beach skate park in Newport. And if anybody knows about that skate park, it's just a bunch of sand and, like, a ledge that was tipped over and then cracks. And then they took it down, like, a few years ago. But, like, yeah, that's what I would skate. So every time we would have a family beach day, I would go to the skate park and nice. try to skate. That's sick. Yeah, it was super fun. And then we had MLK. So, the MLK Center in Newport. With the banks? Yeah. Mad fun. Just went there, like, a week or two ago. Yeah, I saw. It was sick. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Like, yeah. for, for just banks, like, it's you can have a lot of fun there. Solid session. Good flat ground, too. Basketball yeah, they, they fixed it. They fixed the flat ground, believe it or not. Before then, it was super rough. Like, it yeah. was super rough. <laughs> like, I'd kick flip and, like, land in a crack and just fall. Yeah, it was dude, bad. That's the worst when the ground sucks. Yeah, but it kind of got you used to the East Coast crust. Yeah. Like, cause when I when I lived in Connecticut, there was a lot of crust, a lot of crusty spots out oh, in yeah. Connecticut. Yeah, hell yeah. So, I like skating Connecticut. Mad fun. Connecticut Day has trips spots. out there. 
Yeah, there's tons of stuff out there. The Manchester Bank in the Woods? Yeah, dude, that thing's sick as hell. I lived in Manchester for a few years, nice. and uh, me and my boy Odd, which he was like my filmer filmer, like when I was like 16, like he was the, he's the he's the homie, him and uh, Devin, Devin Emerald. Hell yeah. Those are my boys from Connecticut. That's dope. And yeah, we used to, we used to go out there. We used to go out to the banks and just have so much fun. That's And sick. drive around Connecticut two, three in the morning just skating. Yeah, like, that's the best. Yeah, like snowing, like we would wear gloves and like yeah, we'd yeah. go hit a rail or something <laughs> and it would be the worst because like when I hit the ground, hands are numb. Oh yeah, dude, I remember. It's been a while since I've had a, like a fucking frigid session, but I can remember them for sure. It was, it was never, never would I ever trade those like memories though in skating. Oh, fuck no. And like I miss the homies every day and I text them like at least once a week and tell them hey we need to go get a session going or something soon where have you been skating lately uh, i've been skating a lot of uni in uh providence just like trying to stay consistent with gaps um i try to skate pc a lot love skating pc has got that rail spot um and like a nine stair uh nine stair with a rail on it and uh a monument it's got a bunch of sets oh just like rhode island providence and stuff yeah yeah, yeah that's sick yeah i want to skate boston a little bit more it's just like it's a hassle because like there's traffic all the time in boston yeah. i feel like peak time to skate boston would have been during like the, the covid times <laughs> where oh, everybody dude. was inside because there'd be you know traffic you just gotta scour the outskirts there's so many cities you just go go to new bedford fall river uh definitely providence Worcester has spots like yeah I just, just need to get lost I just need to go with somebody that knows spots yeah 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 that's like sure. the plan that's sick man so you've been skating uh oh the hive jams those are fun as hell the hive jams are super sick um it was a lot of fun <laughs> uh it's good to see everybody out there like um when Dickie came out there and all like when you came out there how the many whole... jams have you done at hive that is my third one, I believe, because I did the two Gator jams, and then there was another jam that they had, and I can't remember what it was called, yeah. but I remember I skated in that one, too. Mad fun, though. Yeah, I had to get used to Hive. Hive, I haven't skated that much, but like, I feel, I feel like I've skated it enough to where it's like, I can skate comfortably there. Yeah, that my, fun. The, the Gator jam, too, where they had the mini session, I did not expect to do so well because i usually suck at that mini like i fall a lot at that oh, the mini. mini ramp yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the half pipe that ramp's mad fun it is mad fun it's like perfect quick fast Got yeah walls and extension that's what was messing with me yeah that's it <laughs> but um i saw olive she killed it in that dude olive's been ripping yeah she just got her first back one dude i saw on instagram sick yeah all the whole all i need like the the little homies I just call them like yeah. Elijah Anders and everybody like they're all super sick. Dude, they all been ripping, man. Yeah. And like taking the lumps that come with skateboarding, then like recovering and skating again, you know. They're like they Elijah. Yeah, Elijah's <laughs> Talk, a savage. They're like Ollie off the top of the uh, the thing at Hive. <laughs> oh, dude. He was talking. He was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna go for it." <laughs> it's like that's the best way to skate, man. I was like, he was like, you're gonna kick flip. I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> I love skating with Elijah. Yeah, he just charges for sure. So, yeah, it's especially like a shark. <laughs> and he kick flips down stuff. Oh, dude, he's a beast. He'll I try my it. best to like tell him to do stuff. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, just go for it. Yeah. He goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of says, yeah. yeah. He just kind of agrees with it after a little bit. <laughs> but every time I see him, every it's always a good session to skate with him. Yeah. Hell yeah. I went to North Carolina with Elijah <laughs> and Chloe. How was Shit that? It was mad fun. I heard North Carolina has a lot of great skate parks. Yeah, dude. There's a lot of parks down there. We went to Oak Island. It was sick. It's just like a beach town. And it was just like all big bowls and... It was and... just like a... It was a street park. Really? Yeah, it had a bunch of like a bump. To, it had an A-frame with a rail. It had some uh, bold corners. It was sick. It that sounds fun. Some hubbas. Just on this beach town, it was sick as fuck. They put us up in like a beach house right on the ocean <laughs> for a couple days. Living like, lavish. Yeah. It was sick, yeah. That sounds my my coolest skate park I've probably been to would probably be like Hyde. Hyde? Yeah, in Boston. Yeah, Hyde's mad fun. Hyde. Minus Greenside because Greenside was super sick. 
If I, yeah, super, super Did sick. Did you ever skate um, Skater's Island? No. I really wish, though. Shit was so sick. I met a lot of the people that helped build it. Like, yeah. a lot of people that skated it. But I, I, didn't, I just didn't know about it yeah. when I was younger. That park was sick, man. I seen, like, a couple of vid- uh, videos of it. Like, some footy out of it. Yeah. It looked like a lot of fun. It was fucking... It was, like, the edge before the edge. Yeah, the edge is fun, too. I love the edge. It's just very slippery. But that's I mean, okay. All indoor parks. Yeah, Lighthouse was very slippery. You just gotta <laughs> hang on. <laughs> it's like a trade off, you know. Yeah, but Edge has like everything. Yeah. Ridiculous. So, like the set, the set. It's like my favorite set. In the back. Yeah. Yeah, sick. <laughs> that rail. I just started skating that rail like a little bit more than what I used to. That's like a handrail. That's like a street rail. Kind that of. is like a street rail. It's like you gotta get on top of it and hang on yeah for dear life and then to not slip when you land (laughs) there's been a few times but like i kind of like when parks are a little slippery because it just i don't know it helps me practice with like my reverts like if i want to do something to a revert like a fakie yeah yeah it makes it a lot uh easier it's crazy because every different indoor skate park has a different level of slipperiness yeah it's it's (laughs) gotta relearn how to skate each day yeah you 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 know what to expect at a certain indoor park and you know what spots you're gonna slip at and you're kind of like that that weight distribution is like crazy (laughs) they're like i know if i put too much weight on my foot i'm just gonna slip out but it's still like a lot of fun yeah. But I definitely want to travel. Um, I went out to Arizona in March to That's go it. see my girl, and I skated some of the parks out there. Where did you go out there? I was in Flagstaff, and then we would uh, we went like around Flag. Like I don't know the cities around there. I've been but, to uh, Flagstaff. Have you? Yeah, I used to live in Phoenix when I was younger. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because you're really good at skating. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Thanks, man. No problem. Um, but I I didn't even skate out there. You didn't? No, this was like before I skated. You missed out. <laughs> I got my first board in New Hampshire. New Hampshire? Yeah, and then started skating Massachusetts a bunch, bunch after that. I moved. I got my board in New Hampshire and then moved to New Bedford. Damn, that's sick. Yeah, it was sick as hell. But damn, you lived in Phoenix? Yeah, when I was mad young. How I'm long? going. Wait, you went out there or you lived out there for a while? No, nah, I went to go visit her for her birthday. Who? My girlfriend. Oh, sick. Yeah, so oh. she she lives in Flag. Yeah, did you hit some parks out there? Yeah. Flagstaff has some, like, good local parks. Oh, sick. There was one called Bushmaster where she filmed a few clips of me. That's and, like, sick. it was kind of snowy because a lot of people think that Arizona is all desert. I was yeah. one of those people. Flagstaff is the third snowiest city in America. You can just drive from, like, Phoenix. I think it's, like, from Phoenix to there. It's, like, an hour or two, and you just drive yeah. the snow from the yeah. desert to snow. And the elevation is at, like, nine thousand something feet so like when i got there i was so out of breath from everything i did and i was so confused on why and that's because we're at sea level yeah flagstaff is like the mountains (laughs) so it's kind of like hard to breathe like when i was carrying like the luggage and everything yeah you gotta change your breath basically yeah acclimated to it and then i'm going back out there for my birthday i leave in july i'll be leaving july 13th to go see her again and uh, we're going to be staying in Tucson, oh, and we're yeah. going to be visiting, like, Phoenix, Tucson, and, and like, surrounding areas. One of my favorite skateboarders is from Tucson, Aaron Susky. Yeah. yeah, Susky Grind. Yes. <laughs> so good. The Susky Grind. I used to skate with Susky on Birdhouse and Zoo York, and, like, uh, we just did a bunch of trips together skating. That's super sick. Dude, he's <laughs> the best dude ever. It sounds sick. Such a legend. I really wish I could meet some OGs. <laughs> yeah, he, he's the homie. I was hyped to meet him. Hey, he's from he's from Tucson? Yeah, originally. Yeah. yeah. I think he still lives there or he moved back there. Maybe the Phoenix, because Phoenix has the Phoenix AM. And yeah, I really want to go skate that. It's yeah. It's Cowtown. Uh, Cowtown Skate Shop. It's out, that's, it's out in Phoenix? That's who throws that contest. I, yeah, I need to stop skate by shop. and then check it out. It's been going on forever, the... The Phoenix Ann. Yeah, so one of my homies I met in the Army, his name was Stogie. He was from Phoenix, and he lives in Phoenix, and he was telling me, he was like, yeah, well, like, come out here and skate in the Phoenix AM because they have, like, a locals-only section and stuff, and, like, I checked it out. Like, that skate park looks sick. Yeah. So, yeah. like, when I go out there for my birthday, I'm going to try to go. Well, I'm not going to try. We're definitely going to go skate it. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. And, like, surrounding skate parks, just because, like... They got a bunch of good parks. They have so much parks. Arizona ridiculous. is super sick. Yeah, it's ridiculous. 
They have ditches too. Some fucking yes. Ditches. Oh, I've seen them. I've yeah. seen them. I'm like, damn. Like I need a like big gaps are my thing. Like I need to skate like ditch gaps and like just like a bunch of cool stuff. Have you ever? This is random, but have you ever just gone out in the desert at night and just walk off into the desert? And look up? <laughs> Sick. No, so sick. no, like you get so. Where there's no like light pollution, just kind of like dark in the desert. Find a spot. Yeah, so um, see me, the whole fucking universe. Yeah, so me and my girl have been like um saving like different spots because she's she's from Arizona, so she knows a lot more than I do. So we've saved like a bunch of like the the spots in like the desert where like it's just all stars. Yeah, it's that's like, what I'm saying. And you can see everything. Yeah, sick. I saw my first mountain out there. What? I took pictures of it, and her and her family <laughs> laughed at me, because <laughs> I had never seen a mountain before. <laughs> <laughs> we got mountains around here, man. Do we? Yeah, not like not sure. like Arizona, man. No, it's like, a different picture of it. Ooh, like, sure. It's we flatter went, out there, so it's like... There's like, mountain, like, it's just mountain, mountain, like, everywhere I went, it's just a mountain. <laughs> then she took me to this thing called the Snow Bowl. It's oh. like um, a ski resort on, like, the side of a mountain. <laughs> and it's just like a mountain. Yeah, that sounds epic. Like I know, uh, Massachusetts has like this ski resort that's on the side of a mountain, yeah. and it's like, uh, what is it? I forgot what it was called. I don't know the Massachusetts. I can't like, remember the name of it. That's that was my first time snowboarding. It's there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, maybe it was called like Wachusett. I think. That sounds right. Yeah, it sounds pretty Massachusettsy. Count it. Count it. <laughs> yeah, and snowboard um. Snowboard park in Massachusetts. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called Wachusett. I could be wrong though, but um, Dro, Dro knows what I'm talking about. Dro Bueno, he wants me to go out there and, and snowboard. Let's see. I mess with him all the time. I tell him I'm better than him at snowboarding. <laughs> Wachusett Mountain, 27 trails, eight lifts, 2006. That sounds Foot about summit. right. New England's most accessible ski resort. Yeah, so that's where I went snowboarding for my first time, like last year. What sick. And it was a lot of fun. And I was like, damn, that's a big mountain. I got to Arizona. I was like, damn, that's a <laughs> yeah. that's a huge mountain. It's crazy, man. It's like it's wild and I wouldn't have like been happier than going and seeing her and, and seeing and experiencing Arizona. Because I plan to move out there uh with her. Sick. Um so we're just trying to get that figured out and you know, bring some east coast to the west coast because a lot of people tell me I should I should go skate down uh over in the west. Yeah, dude, it'd be sick to just live somewhere else and just fucking skate all the place. Yeah, it's a lot of uh Native American uh culture, a lot of Mexican and Hispanic like uh culture out there too. It's just like there's just so much cool stuff. I went to Sedona. Nice. Sedona has a lot of um rocks, right? Yeah. Sedona. It's super sick like just waterfalls just like pouring out of like the side of a mountain is like it's just yeah. the coolest experience yeah it's sick out there and the weather i love it it's always hot you like being fucking baked yeah kind of <laughs> <It's laughs> like i the sun. <laughs> like 95 degrees is like gallon of water yeah it's just like my my prime time i love skating in that heat because nobody ever stops you yeah. it's too hot for people to go outside and kick you from spots That's so like true. when it's super hot people just like stay in the building in the air conditioning yeah and they just don't bother me yeah although like i'll like wring my t-shirt out after like four or five attempts because i'm just sweating <laughs> yeah yeah it's brutal you can fucking i used to get heat exhaustion yeah terrible time, <laughs> terrible just forget that you're supposed to drink water yeah because you're like i gotta get what this trip <laughs> yeah we were just talking that with someone else the other day I can't remember what you, who it was or what they It was about pissing, pissing blood. But it's more like, you ever like dehydrate yourself where you piss like a brown color? So. I did that a <laughs> bunch of times skating. Probably shouldn't have, but. So, um, at, uh, damn, what, Tech 9 oh, in that's Middletown? Oh, set, yeah. And a rail, too. Yeah, Tech that, 9. It's a nines there, right? Yeah, yeah, that is the first spot that made me that piss spot. blood. <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah, that one will do it. Kidney damage, I think Basically. somebody said. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I was trying to tray flip it for like, for like hours, like <laughs> like four or five hours of just trying to tray flip it. That's a good tray flip. Yeah, I got the clip well, and like it. yeah, I have it on like my Instagram and everything. Oh, After like yeah. two years and like multiple broken wrists and stuff, like I broke oh, my man. wrist there a bunch. I pissed blood after my session there. How many times have you broken your wrist? <sighs> 
in the double digits. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got a scar, and um, I got a plate or not a plate, a screw in my wrist now. How's it doing now? It's good. It doesn't hurt as bad anymore. Not I used good. to have like horrendous wrist pain in both my wrists, actually. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of glad that it kind of went away. Yeah. I think that was after I got done with basic training and everything, cause like I hadn't skated, so I hadn't fallen on my wrist in a very long time. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I was doing wrist exercises and stuff, cause like and during basic, like you can't really do much. It was either like write letters or work out. So What's like, the schedule? Tell, tell me about what time you gotta wake up. Basic training, wake up. So when you first get there in reception, it don't matter what time you get there you will be waking up at two or three in the morning and if you get there at two or three in the morning you're not getting to sleep and you're going to chow (laughs) and then chow is at like it's probably at like zero four thirty to zero five so like five in the morning and i went january so it was so cold in south carolina i was in uh fort jackson in um and columbia south carolina I I believe, um, and it was so cold, it was so, it was terrible, because they make you wait outside in the cold to go get breakfast, and I had food poisoning when I first got there, so, like, (laughs) yeah, so, like, so, that's what I get for having, um, Chinese food from an airport the day before, (laughs) so, Sometimes you make the bad choice. And it was my first ever time going on a plane was to ship out for basic training. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I remember my mom was so sad. <laughs> but I think she was crying tears of joy. And I had gained the courage to be like, all right, my first plane ride, I'm about to kill it. Yeah. And then my flight got canceled. I was like, oh my gosh. What? So now I have to regain my confidence to take this plane ride. And um, the next day, like, uh, it's like four in the morning when they finally find me a hotel to go to. And then, so I order some Chinese food and I kill it. Cause I'm like, I'm not about to have some good food for a while. Yeah. Woke up the next day. I did not feel good at all. <laughs> I went to the store and bought like two packs of Tums and yeah, some I Pepto. Five times. <laughs> Ugh, I was throwing up. That was the oh, worst I part. <laughs> I wish I was shitting my pants. <laughs> like I puked on the plane so much. Uh, like I made it through my first plane ride, which is like an out <laughs> so yeah. bad, especially because like you're in that skinny toilet and it's hot as hell and you're kind of like shit. <laughs> like yeah. it sucks. I wish I was shitting my pants. <laughs> like I was throwing up so much that they moved like they moved people from the back of the plane to like take my seat and stuff. Wow. And gave me like ginger ale and like pretzels. <laughs> and, like I was like, yeah, if you just need to go, go again. And I was like, thank you. Yeah. And so I get to reception. We get off the plane. Uh, we go to the USO, which is like this little military section in the airport for uh, like people that are veterans or going uh, any military travel. And um, then we leave to go get a cab to drive us to Fort Jackson. I get out the cab and like I sprint to the side of the building and I throw up again. Oh, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, it was, I was miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I was so miserable that I thought I had COVID. Oh, no. uh, but I was like, no, oh, I'm, <laughs> I was like, I'm double vaxxed. Like, I don't want to be here longer than what I already have to be. Yeah. So uh, I go through reception and it's terrible, like, terrible. I'm cold as shit. <laughs> I'm sick as hell. You're recovering somehow. Yeah, man. Like, I'm telling you, like, my first night there, I fell asleep. I woke up, and then they bring us uh, our breakfast. Our first night was an MRE, which is, like, the little brown bags of, like, military food. Yeah. And the first thing that I ever had was, um, it was a uh, beef stew. And, like, it came with these little Twizzlers, and I tried to eat, the like, the Twizzlers. This is what, you're, this is what made you sick. Yeah. So, like, I <laughs> ate some Twizzlers. Cause like eating the, Twizzlers and beef stew, bro. Yeah. And, like, immediately. Oh, that's, a, that's a fucked up combo. <laughs> immediately, I threw up everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, I need to go to the, the, the medic. <laughs> and they were time like. Out. I need a time out. <laughs> yeah. People were, like, watching me puke. <laughs> and, like, I made other people puke. And I was miserable. And I was just like, That's I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, if I puke for two more days straight, I'm going home. And I'll come back next week because this is not fun. How'd you play? How'd it ride out? Uh, I just went to the 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 medic spot and um, 
ginger ale helped, huh? And they, yeah, they, they gave me, like, some... Ginger ale. <laughs> That's what they gave me, and then, like, they gave me some medicine, and then, like... Hamster shaving? Yeah, <laughs> probably, they should have. <laughs> and then, uh, then they gave me a little Bible, and, uh, then I got sent, and I had to sit in the barracks all day. Yeah. And, and just throw up. <laughs> With the Bible? Yeah, I was reading the Bible while, like, puking. Jesus. Yeah, I was trying to... <laughs> feel holy <laughs> so I was struggling it was it was rough though because like um <laughs> it's like five in the morning they bring us to the defac which is like it's just a dining facility the defac and it's just like the food was so good it wasn't like that at basic reception they like try to make it not as bad yeah just but like when you get to like basic basic like it's a lot worse yeah. depending on what uh what company we you just were. went to Woodward and we had um, some pasta with like chicken parm. That must we be nice. Some, uh, what else did we have? Some bacon, some eggs. Yeah, no, we didn't have that. Our yeah. eggs are made out of yellow water. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah yellow and, water eggs. Delicious. And yeah, no, like it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and then like the French toast was amazing. Ooh, Anybody that went French to toast. Fort Jackson, shout out French toast. Yeah, Fort Jackson's French toast is Fire. the only good part about that experience. Yeah. And like you could make money like selling that French toast. <laughs> like if I gave you my French toast, I'd expect you to like cash at me like ten dollars on that Sunday when we get our phones yeah. if we didn't get in trouble. It's that good. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I stole a lot of MREs, and I sold a lot of MREs <laughs> while we were there. <laughs> a lot of people, we got caught so much with contraband. It was just it was just a wild time. But, yeah, like, <laughs> the de fact, they would make me throw up, like, next to the dumpster. <laughs> yeah. And, like, they forced me to eat. So, like, I'd be eating, like, the food and just puking. Jesus. It was rough. For how long? I was at reception for like two weeks, and then I was puking for like a week and a half. Gnarly, dude. Yeah. That's insane. I remember after like the seventh day, I like texted my mom. I was like, I'm so miserable. Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't think like if I'm like, I think I'm dying at this point. Like, I was like, I ran, I texted her, and she was like, she was like, no, you got this. And like, uh, she prayed with me a lot. So like, my mom was a gangster. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. But yeah, and then after uh, you go through like CIF and like um, you go through like all this stuff, you got to do a lot of stuff. Uh, medical, I got like eight or nine shots, a lot of grown men crying, a lot of girls crying, a lot of people passed out from the shots, uh, blood drawn, dental, like all in one day. Like I got my dental visit and like in a line, they had me in a line, went to dental and then got like five or like three or four vials of blood taken from me <laughs> and then and then they sent us to go do like whatever the hell it was to like clean or sweep yeah sometimes we got to chill but it was like rare yeah and how then long did you do it for uh reception just how long did you serve or how long were you in the so i was in for three years what, what exactly were you doing army army yeah three so years. yeah in the army now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um Three years, it was a long wait because of COVID and because I had broken my wrist and I had surgery, so I had to wait a lot for um for my clearance to go. Oh yeah. But yeah. You gotta be healthy. Yeah, so um yeah, it was a lot of a lot of fun. Basic was super cold. A lot of rain, a lot of lot of really cold weather. Yeah. Um, snowed on us a few times. It was super cool though one time we got in a lot of trouble and it was like thunderstorm it was it was like like a flooding our cta so it was like a um like a big cement block with like a a, a lightning protection roof so like so you don't die yeah i thought i was gonna get hit by lightning like yesterday yeah no we it was almost raining mad heavy and lightning was going off like crazy yesterday yeah so yeah. like when i was stationed in georgia we actually had somebody die from a lightning strike just took him right there dude. yeah oh, it, he, it was like you, him bro. him and nine other soldiers got like hit by a lightning strike that's crazy it was wild and he died and they had like a safety meeting about it and we were in like a ruck what that they, morning they tell you like watch out bolts from the sky just fucking take you yeah so while. like the whoever was running the gun range Run, was like you know they were stupid because like you're supposed to not 
conduct like range operations when there's lightning anytime you see lightning you're supposed to like wait underneath the lightning protection shed but whoever was doing range safety or range operations got in trouble because they were like it's whatever like even we were out on a hike um my pl- uh not my platoon my company was out on a i said a hike on a ruck um and like i was like <laughs> yeah i mean it was like a like what like six six miles seven miles it's a hike yeah, a little hike. It's a hike for sure. I mean, I liked walking and yeah. like yeah. in AIT. Walking, I back walking. Yeah, AIT, you're allowed to like have your phone. Basic, you're not. So like now I get to hike, to hike to get to ruck with AirPod. Like I just snuck an AirPod in my ear because yeah, like nice. I would wear my PC and I would kind of tilt it so like my AirPod was hidden. I just throw music on and just just love life and <laughs> just yeah. walk. It's nice but, to zone out sometimes, just, just something you're into. Which is hard to do in the military, like a healthy zone out. Like sometimes, like, like when we're out in the field, like just, you just you kind of go. <laughs> like yeah. you don't want to fall asleep. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. But um, met a lot of cool people. Uh, had a lot of fun. Um, I don't think I'm going to re- re-enlist. Uh, yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of family passed while I was um in. So it's kind of like, I didn't get to say goodbye. So, like, I don't want to go through that again, especially because, like, while I was gone, I was kind of like, damn, like, what if it was my mom? You know, the only person that I've had, him like, consistently in my life? Like, what if it was my mom? Like, I know she's proud of me, and, um, like, I know she's proud that I did it, but, like, I if she ever needed me, I would never want to be able to not be able to be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of scares me. Like, even moving to Arizona is kind of, like damn like i'm not gonna be near my mom like i'm a mama's boy like i love my mom awesome she's like my mom and my dad that's awesome gangster (laughs) she She taught me a lot of uh, tough love yeah but like for good reason and uh she's been through a lot and you know i try my best to 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 help her to pay her back and and you know i love her so much i love my mom so much yeah that's good that's a fucking good that's good yeah but she's so supportive and everything like yeah. she's like she's like good luck at your uh podcast today good luck like i know it's your first time she goes don't be nervous have fun um she supports me going to move to arizona she goes it'd be perfect like you get go experience she wants me to she wants me to leave but she knows that like i will never like not be there for her like yeah if she ever needed me like it's one phone call i'm going back to rhode island to help her yeah, you know man. it'll help if you so how many jobs have you had oh you had a lot of jobs or how many jobs legal jobs yeah mm, <laughs> no <laughs> um kind, well i mean kind of uh i roof right now so i do roofing um and uh military then i worked at walmart for a little bit <laughs> how's that terrible just working at walmart yeah i was in connecticut out? I was I was cap one, cap one so like I did overnight stocking and oh, um yeah, yeah. yeah but uh I got fired cuz this new girl was really like people thought she was attractive like my manager and she kept messing up and she blamed me so then I got fired <laughs> so I was like I remember I like was tweaking <laughs> I was mad as shit <laughs> I threw the box cutter at the guy, and I was just like, oh, I, was, I was like, go outside. No, I know. I was like, go outside. I'm about to fuck you up. <laughs> like, I need this money. <laughs> I was tripping. But at the same, it was like my first, like, real, like, job. Like, before that, I always did, like, under the table, like, construction or, or demolition. And, like, uh, I was always, like, super anxious to get a job because, like, again, like, I had really bad anxiety and social anxiety. And um, so it was kind of like... I was scared. How do you resolve that? Or how how do you resolve it? Skateboarding, kind of. I forced myself to be social. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, um, I started skating more around the time I had anxiety because, like, I'd focus simply on my skate tricks. I would focus on my skateboard. I would take my, like, board apart and put it back together if I was super anxious or having bad panic attacks. Yeah, yeah. Because I got uh, diagnosed with, um a panic attack disorder and a generalized anxiety disorder so like a lot of the times people ask me about it and it's kind of like well panic attack and anxiety are two different things they're in the same group so like i have generalized anxiety and i do take meds for it but and i have panic attacks so like say like um something can trigger it but sometimes like i could just be completely fine and then out of nowhere get super super anxious for no reason yeah yeah 
so skateboarding was kind of like that thing to help me uh, combat it. And then like, I didn't tell the military about it. And it was probably my biggest like test of like self control was uh, being in the military with it. Cause there was a lot of really rough, rough days. Like I wouldn't have slept for like three days cause I'd be shaking all night. So there's yeah. like, it came at a price, but I'm, I'm happy. It's definitely gotten a lot better over the years as I get older and understand it more. I didn't understand it much growing up. I kind of grew up like that too, where I had like a lot of anxiety and worry and stress. Shit I couldn't control that was just happening around me, you know? Yeah. And you're just kind of on this ride and you're trying to figure it out. You're mad young, just dealing with adult shit, you know? Yeah, like... It builds fear, anxiety, and no like... Um... Yeah, it's it's hard when you have a home that's kind of fractured, you know, or broken. Yeah. Or like you, so like it happens. Like your dad could get hit by lightning. Yeah. Be gone, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean. Then that's a whole like thing you have to endure, but um, that's life. Yeah. You just move, with, roll with the punches. The hardest thing is to learn that like, you can't control everything and things you can't control. Like you just can't worry about them, but sometimes like, it's just like I have so much things going on in my head where it's just like like i I get nervous like i get scared it's that's why it's good to have the skateboarding because uh you put that energy that energy into something creative yeah something else you know try to focus it into something else yeah skateboarding has like been like there like I, i'm a skater like skateboarding is me i am skateboarding like it's just i love it it's been my passion it's been my biggest therapy session it's been the hardest lesson like it teaches me the hardest lessons no matter how much it hurts you get up you go again yeah, yeah, yeah it's brought me the most joy meeting people teaching i love teaching people whenever yeah, ever taught skate lessons yeah so, and a lot of people like uh like even elijah who asked me about tray flips because <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. everybody called me tray flips like a few years ago oh hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite trick you like tray flips i well. love them i love them too. i love them so much yeah. but um i love teaching uh I, I just i don't just everything i like getting people that aren't even into skating to do stuff like um a few people that are really good at art like uh my, my girl is really good at art and i want her to design my group tape See. you know like so like she might not skate herself which we're gonna try like i had her skate a little bit when i was in arizona and like she looked so she was adorable she was having so much fun nice. she was super scared though she was holding on to my arm yeah. while i was kind of pulling her you but want, um you don't want to take a slam before you like know how to ride it, you know? <laughs> i told her i was like listen you're gonna fall i'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say you're gonna fall like if you don't fall skateboarding you're not skateboarding yeah like you have to get hurt you have to be tough for sure because you're gonna take some spills she's like i'm gonna break my neck i'm like i'm like babe <laughs> you're skating flat ground go slow yeah i'm jumping down like 10 12 <laughs> stairs like if anything i'm gonna break my neck <laughs> you know what i'm saying but um yeah, she's super good. She's really good at art, and I want her to, like, design, like, grip tape and stuff, and, like, yeah, so it's going to be a good bonding experience with her, so, like, and it gets her into her creative, her creative side, like, she gets to do art and spend time with me, like, that's, that's dope. What, all right, uh, what's something you're into besides skating? <laughs> something random. Uh, music. Oh, hell yeah. Rap music, specifically. Nice. Rap music and video games. Name some artists. Um, Master Ace. Nice. Rakim. Oh, nice. Cannabis. Ooh, can I buzz? Yeah, yeah. yes, can, can yeah. <laughs> so, so one of my good friends. So fast. <laughs> so fast, dude. One of the fastest rappers, dude. So one of my good friends, he's from um Coventry. His name's Clark Wayne. He made a few songs with Rhode um Island. yeah Coventry, Rhode Island. Um, shout out to him by the way. He. <laughs> Yeah, he made a few songs with Cannabis. His nice. old, his Epic old, dude. yeah, his old name was Passionate MC, but he goes by Clark Wayne now, and he's like uh, good friends with Hobson and Cannabis, and he's what? made songs with them. That's legend. Yeah, so um, his music is really good too. That's so, uh, sick. yeah, and he skates. He's he's not bad. He did a kickflip, one footed manual across the Manny Damn, pad. That's wild. Yeah, he's a, he's a big dude too. <laughs> he's really big. Um, and his, uh, his daughter skates a little bit. He got his daughter into skating and boxing and stuff. So, Ooh, nice. yeah, so he's, he's really good, uh, at rapping too. Um, so him and, um, and, uh, I'm trying to think now I'm on the spot. I'm trying to think of guilty, artists, a guilty rap artist. So something fucking guilty rap artist. Something you're quasi ashamed. Of. <laughs> I don't think I'm ashamed of any <laughs> artist that I listen to. But like just guilty some pleasure. 
some random <laughs> some random raps that I find on YouTube, like um Palmer Squares, the MC show in 2011, just some random drunk white dude rapping. <laughs> uh, does he but kill it though? yeah, he killed it. <laughs> he killed it. Him and his it's boy. Like magic when you can rap, like yeah. well too, you know. So like um other artists is Ra the Rugged Man, Vinny Paz, um hell yeah, Millie's Millie's is from um Massachusetts. That's uh it. yeah he's on he's he's like mainstream now. He he raps with Jada Kiss and I love what? Jada Kiss and the whole Lock Styles P yeah. She Gluch and all of them and uh and then uh Ot the Real he's also from Massachusetts. He uh they they've just been killing it. Benny the Butcher, one yeah, of my man. favorite lyricists. R.J. Payne. R.J. Payne's one of my absolute favorite artists of all time. Sick. He's 40 years old, but he, he raps so, like, he's so articulate with his raps. Like, he's, he's super good with his wordplay and his oh, storytelling. Dude. It's amazing when someone, like, hangs on to something that they enjoy doing, and then it's with them for, like, so long. You watch them, like, craft their art. Yeah. And just becoming professional and ripping. Yeah, Whether like it's like skating or riding or rapping or whatever, you know. Yeah, cause I I've noticed some skaters like got like super well known like later on in their life. Yeah. Like there's some like uh there's this uh, I don't know his Instagram app, but it's like the really old dude with the gray hair and he skates in Nikes all the time. Nice, he rips. He, he rips. I know a lot of people have seen his clips, <laughs> but he's just like this like old like maybe in his forties or fifties, maybe yeah. his fifties, but he just like. He's just so smooth, <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. and he rips. And I can't remember his name, but he rips. But yeah. there's a lot of like um, older guys that rip. You're one of them. Dude, thanks. Man. You're one of them. Yeah. Um, there's a. Uh... Dude, I've been skating for like <laughs> I want to say over 25 years sure. <laughs> since I was 13. I'm 40. To I to even do the math, but basically my uh my whole lifetime, yeah, like when I, I was do. born, <laughs> I was born in '99. I use skating as a way to like kind of work with my like anger issues and anxiety issues too. Like um, I put all that energy just into skating. Yeah, a lot of people don't get it the the anger thing. Like when kinda you snap a board, process things. Like if you physically work through a trick, like it's like your mind and body working together trying to figure out a puzzle. And if you can line it up, you can like. It gives you that feeling of like, okay, like you have some control, you know? Yeah. And you assess risk when you skate too because you're kind of like, <laughs> you got to know where your line's at so you don't yeah. get hurt because you can always get hurt on a skateboard, you know? Like you then, can't balance. You're not holding on to anything. You're no, to balance, never. You know? And then the adrenaline, like when you do push that boundary. Yeah. And then that just, that feeling of accomplishment is just like, just like such a rush. Dude, the best. And a lot of people don't get like when I snap a board or when people snap boards, they're like... Oh, that was stupid. I'm like, no, trust me. I just let out so much anger. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that board. Fine, I don't have a board. A board replaceable. Yeah. But if I like broke somebody's jaw <laughs> from just like anger, just like always arguing with people. But yeah. like, I cho I choose to like just snap a board. Sometimes you need to. I yeah. tell people like, if you don't snap, like, it's cool if you if you can control yourself like that. I don't think you're not controlling yourself. There's it's, several different reasons to break a board. Some yeah. Kind of celebration. Yeah. You I sick trick. Your board's dusted, and you get the clip of you ass breaking it with your ass. That's what I'm saying. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> One time, I, uh, in I think Good Eye, the intro to our video, there's a clip of me doing that, breaking a board with my ass, and then hill bombing <laughs> down on my ass. Like, that sounds fun. I just took it down the hill because <laughs> it needed to happen. I was like, this board's dusted. I'm dusted. If I don't break this thing, you know. I just um, I just did an ass snap celebration myself. Dude, um, hell yeah. At uni, <laughs> I had cracked my board, and then I was just talking to one of my homies, Cam. I was just like, hey, I'm about to just land Freak bolts, oh. and I was just like, um, I landed. Um, Cam, uh, Cam Childs, he's he's a, a pretty sure pro BMX rider, but yeah. he he hangs around Providence. He always wants me to do some crazy shit down a gap <laughs> whenever I skate with him or whenever he's biking. Mm. So I always say, yeah. But, like, I have the clip. Like, my board flexed, and then, like, I landed, like, bolts, bolts, and my board flexed and scraped the ground. And then afterwards, I jumped up and then snapped it with my butt. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and then I had a big splinter in my ass cheek. Yeah, it fucking <laughs> happens. <laughs> but it's worth it there's even risk in trying to break your board intentionally yeah that can I've, backfire a lot dude i've stomped on boards and like the front kicked up and hit me in the face yeah <laughs> it's the worst when you like throw your board and it oh. bounces and it gets you in the shin or something You're like i did it to my fucking self when i, I get was shinners. mad and it hurt myself 
so dumb. I've tried to focus my board with my face before. <laughs> oh, <laughs> from a shinner, from an extreme shinner, <laughs> just smack it. Dude. I get so mad it's sometimes. Horrible. I've punched a board in half. Like I've I've tried to elbow my boards in half, and like <laughs> it's I I don't know. I'm a little crazy, but like now nowadays, I'm sure you're not doing it that much. No, no. Yeah. I I've worked through it. Evolved. I now slam my board on the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so so I might need new bearings, but I'm not dropping like sixty dollars on a board. <laughs> So. I used to argue with people in the streets, and now I try to avoid it like, at all costs. Oh, man. The but sometimes amount. there's, like, the spots where, like, you know you got to kind of rush it, and it's like someone's got the clip and the trick in them, and fucking someone doesn't want you to hit the spot. <laughs> you're like, all right, well. Fuck it. <laughs> Evan's good in those situations. I used to be good in those situations, too, and I was like, I'm just going to fucking do it. We'll just deal with the security or this rando. Yeah. Like, now I'm like. I don't really. I'll just come back. I just try to find like a day that works. <laughs> it depends. Like I try to plead my case. It, if they're rude, it could. I, you never know. It might work. Fast. If they're super rude, yeah, you I just take, I crowd. ignore them. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh my bad, I didn't hear you. I had my AirPods are in. But um, if oh, they're super nice. <laughs> If, they're already looking at you like you're a kid. <laughs> you got a skateboard. You're yeah. Kid. I tell them like I seen this one pro he pre-prints out waivers <laughs> and he <laughs> has security sign it <laughs> he's like i'm you're not what your your business name is not liable wow. if i whatever his name was gets hurt at this establishment and it's like notarized and everything no. so i'm that might be the moves starting of 2023 <laughs> he'd have like 50 copies <laughs> like backpack. security would legitimately <laughs> sign it and i'm like you know what that might be the moves of 2023 i might just start bringing them with me That'd be hilarious. Because I almost got expelled out of high school. Well, I did get expelled out of my senior year of high school, but I almost got expelled for skating. Yeah. So, yeah, so, like, um, Manchester, Connecticut, Manchester High School has a um, a rail. It's, like, a double kinked rail down, like, a like a four flat three, flat three, flat three, flat two. And yeah. it's super long. And um, Alex Midler, it used to have, um, it used to be, like, a rail, another rail, and then there was the middle piece was missing. Alex Midler 50 50 gap 50 50. Damn. Yeah, and then they, Jeez. um, yeah, and then they put a piece of the rail back in. So now it's one continuous rail. Yeah. And I tried for so long, for like six months of trying to go, like, just to board slide it to fakey. And Jesus. how many kinks is this thing? It's two. Oh, okay, okay. So I tried to gap out past the first one, but I'd kind of hit it, go down a tiny bit. Um, but security knew me, like, and and when I was in Connecticut, security oh, security knew me. I was just that fucking kid that always had a beanie on. So annoying. Yeah, I always skated. You're so annoying. Yeah, I I wouldn't even go to school. Like I I ditched school. I went. I would skip school and then only go for lunch and then to go see my English teacher because yeah. she was super cool. <laughs> and then um and then I would leave and go skate. Yeah. So like senior year, I wasn't on set to graduate on time. I was going to. But I got into a really big fight like two weeks before graduation or like our last day of school and I got expelled. Dude, blew it at the end. You're <laughs> at the end, bro. Yeah, so, you but did I didn't. all the years, bro. I didn't care. High school is, is horrible. I hated that school. I, I, I hated that security just wouldn't let me be. So, like, if I was having a bad panic attack, I would leave school or leave class and just go sit somewhere and do my work. Yeah. At, like, a corner, like, not bothering anybody. Oh, Steven, you know you can't be here. And I'll be like, come on, man. Like, I'm just not having a good day. Yeah. Like, just let me work here. There was always one security guard. There was always one, and um, he ended up dying. Uh, he had a heart attack in the school, and he uh, hit his head and, and uh, cracked his head open, and he uh, he died in the school. His name was Mitch. Like, he, like, slipped or hit it on a corner or something? He had a heart attack and just dropped. Oh, he had a heart attack and then hit his head. Yeah, he Brutal. was Yeah, he was one of the coolest security guards. He always asked me how things at home were going. He always asked Legend. to see my skate clips. He, everybody, like, uh, loved Mitch. And yeah. then, um, yeah, I was in Connecticut. I think it was, like, um, 2017, maybe. Yeah, it's like getting hit by lightning. It was oh, like it was God, like Mitch is gone. You're like, yeah, no, he died in the school. <laughs> what? It was like seven fifty eight in, in the morning, and all the security guards were like kind of crying, and like the teacher was kind of crying because they oh, called dude. the school to like be put on lockdown. Yeah. I was like, oh, there's another person trying to shoot somebody, <laughs> and then like, and then now we found out that he died, and they let everybody go for the day. Yeah, and the, I think they had like a few days off of school, 
and shit. um yeah they held a vigil at the school and stuff but he was he was always amazing he had always let me skate he had always he was he was a, he was a cool dude and i then, uh, uh i almost uh didn't graduate yeah, I had to go back and take a typing class, <laughs> or I picked it. It was like a computer typing class. Yeah, because I had so many absences. That's because what it is. yeah, because I was just like sleeping or just not going to school. Were you skating? Yeah, skating some of it, just like fucking dealing with shit. Yeah, just didn't a want lot to of home shit. School. Yeah, a lot of home shit. Um, uh, but I had to take a extra class to make up for some of the time, so I did typing. And Westgate, Brandon Westgate's dad was in my typing class. <laughs> trying to learn computers. <laughs> like one finger pet. <laughs> it was like a caveman so, next to me. Because I was pretty good at it. I'm like, I like computers and fucking yeah. typing. And <laughs> words per minute and fucking around. And just do it. Doop, doop, one at a time, clicking. Did you know Brandon at the time? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, uh, yeah, but I don't know if... Yeah, I did. And I knew his dad. I met his dad, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> it was just like funny we're in class. So when I got expelled... um. I had to go back and I had an option to do my GED or get my diploma. And I was like, I'll just do my diploma. So I went to a night school at the same at the same school. Yeah. The same high school, but it was like a bunch of like um older people and like I graduated with like perfect grades in a month. So uh, that oh, so was you did, you, did your G E D? No, I got my diploma. diploma. I did a diploma program. Oh, that's what you're it started saying. off with like 40 or something adults and then like when i graduated it was like 12 <laughs> 12 yeah. to 15 Sick. i felt bad for a lot of the people well, a lot of dudes got arrested some people just gave up and i, I loved night school if night school was an option i would have done night school my entire high school uh, yeah, high yeah, school yeah. time you know night school was sick i could work throughout the day so like after night school i would go to work and i'd work from like s- 6 7 p.m to like 2 3 in the morning yeah and then i would skate home from work and i did a demolition and construction for my landlord at the time yeah so i would uh work get off work and then either stay and work again and then go to school or i wouldn't i wouldn't work and then i'd go to school and then after school i'd go to work one or the other yeah You're doing it <laughs> yeah so i i like that i liked i liked working i didn't like school yeah at all it's good to know you can work and like keep a schedule and like have something worth working for even if it's not a job you want to do because like wherever you go like if you go to arizona and you know you have good work ethic you could work for get a job and just work and stay out of poverty you know yeah and there's um, jobs out there i feel for people that work hard you know so the the roofing company i work for right now is multi-million dollar and they have um they have a you been doing some roofing? Yeah. Sick. So that's, that's what cool. I do now. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's all commercial. Yeah. So they have spots out in Arizona. So when I move, they're going to help me move and they're going to set me up out there. Yeah. So I'm excited. Dude, uh, roofing's a good skill to have, especially if you have, end up having a house. Yeah. Then you can just do your own roofing if it's, I guess. Yeah, because I've done some residential, but we mainly do flat roofing on commercial, but like for side projects like a lot of mobile homes and stuff have flat roofs so for a side project you can make like good money That's doing cool. like an easy job that take like eight ten hours yeah so it's not what i want to do for the rest of my life but like it it it's sustaining right now it's paying the bills Oh hell and yeah. so like it's that's good you yeah. know it's good to be able to make a living yeah yeah it's Amen, definitely bro. yeah no it's keeping me afloat but um ultimately i don't really know I want to be my own boss. Uh, I don't necessarily know what I want, but I know it's my own boss, my own business. It's most likely going to be real estate, real estate and landscaping. Because if I can manage the properties that I own, then I don't have to outsource that much. And if I can do a lot of the work myself, then I'm just saving more money. And I just like, I like working on my own. Like I like solo work like i don't mind working with one or two other people but like just to play some music and nobody telling me what to do like i know what i'm doing like yeah yeah, yeah. like it's cool like it just be sick to just like do your own thing Dude, be your totally. own boss yeah totally because you do that with all i need yeah man well i have multiple jobs man oh yeah see i figured you'd be known but like it's like uh it all involves skateboarding so it's rad you know does it feel like a job or does it just feel like a passion um, there's days where shit feels like a job, even with skateboard work. Yeah. There's days where, like, you've made a mistake and you're like, 
it comes back and hits you in the face on a Friday or something. Yeah. Or you're already having a bad day, and then you're like, oh, and I fucked that up, and now I have to, like, resolve that and figure this out or whatever, you know? Yeah, so there's... Just part of having a work, just working with people in general, you know? All the, the more jobs, the better you take on, because then you'll have more skills, and the more skills you, you can apply to, like, working for yourself, you know? Yeah, I tell people, like, trade jobs are really good to get into. Yeah, just a job in general, like being able to wake up, get along with something, or manage the situation enough that you can get through your day, or like, they're all like a test, you know, test of your characters, like to have, but it's good to have work too, it's good to live somewhere where you you can work, if you have, if you can keep a schedule and you can have reasons to get through the day, Yeah. and get the job done, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of people that do that daily, you know? There's like the grind of just work, but I mean, we all have to work, even if you get everything you want, you'd you'd want to work at that point. If you yeah. Everything you want, you'd want to be working on something that matters to you, you know? Downtime is like... It's all work. Your time yeah. is work, like, on some level. Yeah. Especially, like, nowadays where it's, like, downtime, like, I feel like, for me, like, downtime is kind of boring. So I like doing something constantly. So, like, if I were to have my own thing going on, um, I could work my, my regular job. And then put in work to my own my own thing. Yeah. So like even with skateboarding, that was that's how you start. Was, you start yeah. with like um, you figure out the time you're going to manage at like work usually working for someone else because you're you start out as the apprentice. So you work for businesses, see how business work and runs, and you learn. It's kind of like an education, you know. Yeah. That's kind of what a nine to five grind can be. Is like okay, I'm learning what to do with nine to five. Nine to fives are good. Yeah. So, but anyways, that'll help. You know, it's work. You have yeah. to be disciplined, you have to get along with people, all that stuff. You have to really understand that how the world works. Yeah. Even when you're independent working for yourself, you're still working with other people. Yeah. Like you have to communicate and, you know, do all yeah. sorts of stuff with other people. So you've got to like communicate and relate, and relate to other people and be able to manage your own time, you know. That's the hardest thing is like... Uh, time management? Yeah, like sometimes it's like too much free time, you know, overindulgence and like... You really got to find a balance. You don't want to be drowning in your work, but you also don't want to not be constantly, like, learning from your work. Yeah. It's like a, you got to find a pace to go at so you just enjoy it, you know? And the pace is going to be constantly changing, yeah. you know? So it's like sometimes it might change. Oh, there's and, times where you have lots of work and you just grind it out. And that feels good when you accomplish a bunch, you know? Yeah, hell yeah. Especially, like, if you have, like, a paycheck to show for it and you can pay your bills and shit. It's, like, a dude, good feeling, right? Dude, <laughs> paying your bills is the best feeling. Yes. I was like, I was like, fuck getting 100 on my test, yo. I just, like, made sure that we could eat for another week. Like, get the fuck and, out of here. In, like, eighth grade, I have, in that closet, I have a slip for eighth grade that said for all the four quarters i had like straight f's <laughs> i'm pretty sure and then at the bottom it said like a note it said a pleasure to have in class <laughs> <laughs> <Dude. laughs> that's why i had to take like a night class because i was super nice but that's i just funny. like told everyone out right i'm like i just can't like i'll try to pay attention but i just zone out it's bad adhd shit. that's me too oh. like I just slept for a little bit. I was like, I just can't dent. I was like, you know when you got sick going into the army and you felt like you were throwing up? Dude, I was throwing up. Yeah. I wasn't like sick like that, but I was just like, didn't fatigue. have the emotional. Yeah, fatigue. Yeah. Dude, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Be on autopilot sometimes in the military. It was yeah, just like man. so tired. But um, damn, my grades were kind of good and then they slipped. <laughs> they yeah. slipped super hard. But like. You know, I didn't mind it because I felt like the better I did, the more eyes are on me and the more they expected out of me. But like school just wasn't for me. And I realistically only wanted to graduate because it made my mom proud. Like yeah. I told her, I was like, I don't want to walk across the stage. As long as you, long, it's crazy nowadays because like, as long as you have like a, if you, as long as you want to like learn about something, you can you know like Dude, now if you have like the drive to learn about something and get knowledge there's so much out there online that like you can educate yourself online just through looking up what you want to like what you want to do you know Dude, youtube and google very, yeah like you can literally there's so much collective information out there to like just so you i think school is like the concept is like to teach someone to like thirst for knowledge and keep learning you know like... but sometimes it just, just turns into like 
you know, just babysitting or nine to five or I've, like <laughs> school is like a, a reason to have your kids gone so you can work your job <laughs> or help. like, if yeah, like a bit, if nothing goes crazy, I feel like up till like, I don't know, like eighth grade, I guess should be like the cutoff for school, like in person. Cause like at that point, you know how to read, write, do your you math. Should. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Eight. Great. That's I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have no idea. I think I was yes, like around twelve, cause like I think that's I started I high school too. when I was thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, yeah. One of those. One of those two. Oh, looking it up. That's how dumb I am. <laughs> uh, average age. <laughs> average age for an eighth grader. Oh man. Hell yeah. Thirteen to fourteen. Yep. 13 okay so i was right 13 to 14 years old yeah it was like when i was getting into skating but it was 12 to 13 so like right there. yeah 12 to 13 that's um, eighth grade bro that's so funny <laughs> yeah so it's like right when you should stop going to school <laughs> you should skate more but no um school i feel like is only good if you like you really want to become like if you know what you want to do if you want to be a doctor go to school if you want to be a lawyer go to school yeah. if you don't want to know if you don't know what you want to do and you don't really have any skill sets, no offense if you don't, but like... Get a job. Yeah, get a job or go to school. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, learn. Like, the practicality, like, some people are visual learners, some people aren't. Yeah. But like, everybody will learn through being taught physically. Like, you don't just read over about surgeries when you want to become a surgeon. You do practice surgeries, you don't... Just read a manual about roofing, and then you, you know you're an apprentice, and then you start roofing. Like I feel like it's better to teach kids practical skills, yeah, unless like they real, know what they want to do. Like real world experience. Yeah. Not just like book talk. <coughs> I not would just nerd book talk. Yeah, like I would have my kid like probably go to like a <laughs> trade school. <laughs> to be honest, like learn a trade. So unless you want to become a doctor, like if you know that's what you want to do, then like go to traditional school. But like if not, learn a trade. Yeah. A trade's the way. Or learn computers. Go to school for computers, computer science, um, cybersecurity, learn whatever, anything practical, but make sure that you're, you know that you want to do it. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of money. Where a trade, you just learn through being there physically, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, you can't really become a mechanic unless, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to, like, start somewhere. And I feel like traditional school is, like, not a waste of time. But, like, for somebody like me and you with really bad uh, anxiety, zoning out and stuff, like, practical school just wasn't for us. And if my kid's going to be anything like me and practical school might not be for him or her, trade school. Keep your mind busy. Get your hands moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when you have something in front of you and you can physically, like, do something, go outside and, like, build a shed or something. Like, and you're learning stuff like that. I feel oh, like that's dude, that's better. Sick. In the carpentry. Yeah. And then um, Billy's in electrical. Electrical, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, so trades, I feel like, are super, super important. It's it's good to understand, like, if you understand electricity and how to light up, you know, you could So many stuff. side jobs. You could go, like, fix somebody's yeah. light bulb for, like, <laughs> a couple hundred dollars or their switch stops working, go switch out, go yeah, switch it out and everything. Like, yeah, so it's, like, there's so much, like, trades are so important. So, you know, like, I have friends that, like, the amount of times I've heard, like, oh, I went to college, but I dropped out because I didn't know what I wanted to do. It's like, yeah. damn, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of time that you could have, like, put towards, like, something that you, like, that you could have learned. Like, you might not want to be able to do it. You might not want to do it. But, like, at least you have something, a yeah. skill set that will pay you until you can figure out what you want to do. It's crazy to think that there's people that just don't have, like, um, something that, like, uh, they're working towards. Like, when you're younger, you know, and stuff. You just don't know what you're doing. Call them like, NPCs sometimes. It's <laughs> <laughs> just, like... It's just, it is crazy, though. Like, they just don't know, That's, which is okay. Yeah, people get lost, bro. A lot of people that grew up in, like, stable homes and, like, they didn't really struggle a lot. Like, some, they either, so there's, like, two sides of it. Like, I've met a lot of my friends that, like, came from broken homes that knew exactly what they wanted to do. Yeah. They knew they wanted to make a lot of money, and they had at least, like, ideas, like, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try that. And then I had friends that were from, like, wealthier uh, middle class upper class and they were like I don't know what I want to do I mean my dad's a lawyer I might as well just become a lawyer or my dad's a doctor or my mom's this or that it's kind of like they follow in their footsteps but then there's like the majority of people that just I got a an art 
art degree in in college because like i just wanted a degree and it's kind of like art's sick. <laughs> art is sick <laughs> it is sick and then i'm like well what do you want to do and they're like well help you, but <laughs> yeah they're like well i don't know and i'm like oh. <laughs> like you should probably figure it out <laughs> or if you want to be a nomad and just travel just get a minivan and just go experience life there's nothing Dude, wrong with my that friend kevin marks he does a look back library and he has a van tricked out and he goes around building libraries at skate shops and skate parks and see, stuff. see that's sick <laughs> just doing sick shit he has the craziest collection of skate magazines too that sounds sick he just travels around and people give him all these mags and like he's finding different issues and stuff and Dude, he's got the collection then, like he gets all these doubles and stuff and he has a huge collection he'll he'll put them like he's traveling so he's always like trying to check out a skate shop and see if they have room for a skate library with magazines and stuff that's super sick yeah and he's just like uh seems like such a cool thing to do yeah know? some people some people know they like to travel like dude. it'd be super sick to just go on a road trip yeah dude um you know kevin and sammy right kevin uh and and sammy skate. yeah 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 they're in cali right now they went and shelly too they all moved out there oh he moved out there yeah they've been living in huntington Oh, is that sick? I seen it because I just seen spots, um new people, new per- like video premieres and like yeah, I just seen Kevin on Instagram posting um him and uh Sammy skating out there, which is yeah, which is super sick. Yeah, it's sick to like go out and try to live in multiple places. I moved a lot when I was a kid. I lived in a lot of different states. I didn't live in a lot of different states, but we moved a lot. Yeah, moved a lot. So I stayed in Rhode Island mostly, Rhode Island and Connecticut, but. Yeah. I can't wait to to go visit. I was supposed to go to uh, L.A. actually this month with uh, Brandon. What? Uh, so I was going to go skate uh, Hollywood High. I was going to try to tray flip over the rail <laughs> down the 16 stair side. Wait, with Westgate? No, no. Um, uh, Brandon Davis, oh. Lighthouse oh, owner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. T- tell me about the tie with Lighthouse. How do you How do you know them? So I met Brandon, like, just going to Lighthouse and skating. And then, like, I left for the military, and I came back, and, like, I had friends that skated there, and, like, when I came back, it was kind of, like... Lighthouse is, like, a small skate park. It was in Pawtucket, right? It was in Pawtucket, yeah. Yeah, and it was in this, like, building that also had an arcade and, like... Yeah, the pinball arcade. ...studios and stuff like that, and just, like, had an indoor small park. Yes, it was small and indoor, but it was a lot of fun. Mad fun. Yeah. There was, like, movable stuff, and it was all small and, like, super fun to skate. Yes, Bug and Robbie... Huge shout out to them for helping build a lot of the skate park. <laughs> yeah, and then um, there's another guy I can't remember his name, but he built the rail. He he made the rail for free. The Whoa. one that's on like the the Crossing the bank. Down. Yeah, nice. Love that rail. That's a sick rail. That rail taught me so much. <laughs> hours there, nice. Uh, my front blunt backside flip out on that rail Whoa. was my favorite clip. <laughs> wow, that's a heavy one. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. I didn't even know I was gonna land it. Yeah. I was skating with Cody. I love Cody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Cody Stribe, Corporal Stribe. Oh, he, nice. mar- he was a Marine, so that's like how we started talking about uh, military. Oh, no shit. Yeah, and then I found out he was really good at skating. That's awesome. Yeah, so we skated a lot in the winter. Yeah, dude, it's the best when you get a homie, in the, especially in the winter, indoor parks and stuff, shredding. And he's really good at, like, mini ramps. Ooh, and transition, I, so he, fun. Yeah, and I got him more into the rail. Like, we learned so much rail tricks over the winter. That's sick. We learned so much rail tricks. <laughs> it was, it was kind of wild. I was like, damn. Oh, I remember those days, dude. It's it, been a while, but, like, I remember, like, just, like, days where you'd learn, like, a few tricks on rails. Shit just starts unlocking. Yeah, crazy, like. Like, flipping into rails, too. <laughs> the like, flipping into rails were, were psychotic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I could like, Timmy knew it. Oh, Timmy's got a crazy good one. King Flip Crook. Insane. I wish I could do that. He's the goat of that trick. I, and I, other things. I hit him out. I hit him up like a year ago and asked him. I was like, "How do you do that?" <laughs> and I, did he answer? Yeah. Oh, he <laughs> yeah. He was <laughs> like, "You just kind of have to go for it or something." I can't remember. Game it was so on. long ago. No, he he's, he's not. <laughs> you seen what he did? Yeah, Hollywood. everywhere. Ooh. Yeah, he did at Hollywood. Yeah, that's insane, dude. I really want to tray flip over the rail <laughs> down oh, yeah. the 16th. You were yeah. saying you were going out there for that. I was supposed to, but I just couldn't afford the plane ticket because yeah. I was saving up for my trip to go see my girl uh, in July. But uh, it would have been fun. But yeah, Lighthouse, um, super fun park. Um, I started going there a lot during like went to start of winter. Yeah, I love I, indoor parks in the East Coast. It's a uh, heaven sent. It is. Especially if you work through, if you need to work through energy and break a sweat and like 
it's the it's lab. Like clutch to have it, yeah. It's where you cook. The winter time is. I kept telling people, I was like, I'm cooking in the lab for the winter. So summertime, every gap, every rail, new tricks, brand new me, all that smaller stuff. I like to. I like to learn stuff on something small, and then I'll take it to something big immediately. Oh, dude, I remember just being like, all right, I know the thing at the park. I'm gonna learn the trick on, and then find the street spot. And then you have yeah. the street po- spot to do it on, and you just practice it on the park until you have it locked. And then you go get it on the street spot. So like I, that's I, the best feeling. Yeah. So like that staircase, I learned the nolly flip down, and then like the next thing I nolly flipped was um like I literally just posted it. It was um, it was like at uni how it has like the uh the quarter the gap uh, that I usually skate. Yeah. Um, I a dicky filmed me doing a front shove down it. So if you remember that spot, I nolly flipped it. Yeah, man. And like that was that's like. The, before that, that little, like, four stair was, or, like, the three stair at, at Lighthouse was what I nolly flipped. Yeah. So, like, I like to go, and, like, now I want to go to, like, an eight or nine stair, and I'm just going to try it. Yeah, it's the best when you know where your flip, your, like, nolly flip is, or your short <coughs> flip is on a set, and you find the perfect set. Yeah. Perfect pop, good runway, good landing, not too crazy. Yeah. It's the best when you find a spot that, like, complements your style, and you have the right trick in mind, and it, like, looks good. There's a lot of super sick spots like that. Yeah, dude, that's filming the video part. That's what I love about skateboarding is filming the video parts. It's like going and finding spots and doing tricks on them. Just like, and then you have this collection and it's like so many different times. It's so crazy every time you street skate because you could go out and like get nothing. Or you could get something. Or, or you, you can get, get work. <laughs> yeah, you could get broke off. It's like every mission's different, you know? Yeah. Some so days you get like a certain type of trick. Your body's working this way, like. I went best. I went street skating with Brandon and he is filming with his really nice camera and I think that day we got seven clips. That's it. <laughs> yeah, some days when you're it was like just landing like, and everything and you're going to new spots and you're like, wow, I could do this and that. Like, it's the best feeling. I try my best to get a minimum of three clips because um, I just, I really want to get this video part out and, and done and just like, I just want to like, I keep evolving. So like, I always is like, damn, like, I don't want to drop this. Like I had enough clips for a video part, but it's like, damn, I kind of sucked. <laughs> like I got better so it's kind of like fuck it I'll just film new stuff a lot of my clips are just like memory based like I just like I have um the bet the best is working on a part though when you just start saving clips and you get like um a collection that you want to release you like set a a goal you know yeah it's sick if you're like um the best feeling ever Steven is like when you start to get like five or six maybe or six to eight clips or lines like yeah you start to see it and you're like oh shit this could be a part you know and yeah you a chunk and you've hold, held on to it yeah and then you just like every time you go skate and you see that chunk it's like you're building something along the way you start to find spots that you're like this or like you start to add stuff and it's sick to see it like building a video part is one of the best things ever yeah i think i'm finally starting to take it more serious um it's good to have a filmer you gotta have like the ride or die filmers yeah that was the best that was odd filmer that was odd in in connecticut yeah like i had a bunch of filmers when i was coming up like just cool ass dudes that filmed the shit out of me we have so much like like maybe like hundreds of hours of footage of yeah. Connecticut skating That's and 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 I have I still have it I burned a CD I made a little edit Sick. called I um have two CDs <laughs> I made it I called it VHS with special me tapes <laughs> I called it eight six zero times and yeah. it was just the embodiment of me Audi and Devin's friendship. It was all like night clips, cause we would, I would skip school, or whatever. He picked me up, and we just night go clips skate. Are sick as hell. Just skate all night, and it was just like it wasn't like I had some bangers in there. Don't get me wrong, like the Springfield uh, rail, yeah, the the one in Springfield, Mass, that has like the, the big, big bank, bank. Yeah, yeah, like I had some clips there and stuff, and just What'd like you do there? that spot's gnarly. Oh, I, I um, I don't think I've ever done a trick there. I off the like the ledge into the bank. Mm-hmm. I kick flipped into it. What? And then I also you fifty looked over the rail into the bank. I mean, kind of over the rail, cause like they have like the really big ledge, like off to the side. Mm-hmm. It's like this is the ledge, and then they have like the little benches. Yeah. So like the bigger ledge into the bank. Oh, that's so. what I did, and then um I fifty the off the bench. I fifty the rail, and then just popped over into the bank. Yeah, that looks fun as hell. Yeah, it was scary. <laughs> Super skinny Dude, rail. Evan, Evan ollied up on the bench, and then he ollied up on the rail. 
and went around the corner down the yeah, stairs I seen and that. popped in. What a weirdo. Really? <laughs> he's, he's so gnarly. Yo, he was driving to the end on stuff. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, dude. He's a beast. I kind of want to maybe up. front blunt that rail. Like, if I could front blunt shove out into the bank, yeah. I feel like that would be... That'd be like an ender. <laughs> Dude, I got a bunch. You got to come skate with me. I got a bunch of spots. Please. It'd be like <laughs> a beating. Saturday or a Sunday. That's show. perfect. That's when I have yeah. days off. And the weather's got to be right. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. But I got a bunch of spots I can show you. Like a bunch of big gaps. Uh, I'll show you a bunch of shit. Bunch of shit, man. Yeah. I got to get some tech- technical tricks. I don't it's skate just good like to this. skate everything. It is. I'll surprise you. Thank you. <laughs> I always tell Anders when we're on trips, he's always like, wants to know what's next. I'm like, it's a secret. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you're just going to figure it out. <laughs> Ew, I, need, I need to go skate some of the famous spots. <laughs> uh, those are cool to like, this is my opinion, but you can feel however you want. Mm-hmm. Please do. You're entitled. That's your life. But uh, for me, it's like fun to go to those spots, but it's also sick just to like bounce around for the day and find spots. And it is. Have someone show you around. The Sometimes going to a spot that's like just been killed, it's like... You know, two different things. I yeah. want to go to the Brooklyn Banks, though. Cause it's they rebuilt again. it, right? They It's open. They, they like, blocked it all off. They, like, took it up for parking for the city because I think it's technically parking. Yeah. And skateboarders just kind of took it over. And then, like... As they, they do. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think, like, as the world shut down, they made it parking. So then now. It's just, like... And then, like, uh, my homie Steve R., who uh, lives in the city, like, worked with the ta- the city and got it to, like, open up again to skating and everything like yeah. so which is awesome are there technically nbds since it's been reopened mm. or would you count those as abds oh so it's just like skate it skate so it's it. i'm like the point now where i'm just like do whatever you want to do i like uh i don't know that's such a touchy subject for people because like I don't know. Sometimes I don't want to know what someone's done at a spot because I just want to skate it fresh eyes and do what I want. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, I've been skating so many spots and going back to spots for years that, like, I go back to it and I'm older and I'm like, my trick selections change, you know? Yeah. Or, like, there's times when you go back and you're just like, certain tricks work, you know? It's like, I want to do it on that rail. It's a trick I have. I can do this. It'd be sick there. But yeah. someone else did it. I'm like, I don't want to know. Don't tell me. You could always do it cleaner. <laughs> or the fakey. <laughs> like, there's always something or do it this way or that way i for a while though but then people get heated at you i got called uh most mbd dude wait no not mbd already been known <laughs> like they i just they said i did everyone else's tricks or something fuck it yeah you do it in your own style but i don't really care because i never took it personal i'm like dude i've been i have so, so many video parts like <laughs> i've been skating for 20 something yeah like, 20 plus there's years there's just a point where i stopped caring because i was like i went to california and i saw at the top of the stairs they had a list of what had been done. And I was like, this is too far. This is too far. This is where I draw the line. <laughs> this is if too I far. If I have to memorize like every stat of someone who did the trick there, and then I have to pick my <laughs> trick, I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. Yeah, fuck that. I just want to feel it out sometimes. Certain tricks work, dude. And if it's been done, like two people done it. That's still amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, two people have done it. That's it. amazing. <laughs> but there's like, so that's a problem. Like filming a video part, it's like, going to those spots might be tough because it's like everyone knows the trick so you might have to get the mbd for the video part at that spot like trade Damn. up over the hollywood 16 rail yeah i can't wait over the thing would be crazy yeah so like that'd be one that would be intense you know i can do it i've had faith you got a good tray flip thank you yeah i've been practicing it for a while i love tray flips dude there's such a beautiful trick when i saw that um uh deshaun jordan laser flip down it he did it so beautifully i was like Damn, I want to tray flip over that rail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just shout out Deshaun Jordan. <laughs> That's wild. Because Deshaun Jordan is a monster. Yeah, he's super. Sick. He's super good. He's super good. I've seen him. He's a beast. I want to meet him. Him yeah. and Jocelyn. Oh, sick. Jocelyn's rad, too. I want to tray flip El Toro with him. <laughs> oh, he's a tray flip, guys. <laughs> with yeah. Him. Dude, Jocelyn had that tray flip. I counted it. He basically rolled away. Dude, 20 stairs. <laughs> <laughs> that one's going to haunt you, but fuck. That's nah, amazing. That counts. <laughs> yeah, that was heavy. <laughs> that counts. Because he ollied it. He ollied it and rolled away. He tray flipped it and rolled away for more than three seconds. It's close. I'll say that. I'm not. I'm saying it's a close. Close. You have to live with that on your conscience. Is it still skatable? Uh, people say no, but like uh. if you grab <laughs> enough plywood, anything. Dude, the shit that's gone down on El Toro blows my mind. Jamie Foy's front crook. People back tailed it too. Yeah. Oh, Think man. about that. That's fucked. 
the who's it was like um one was it David Gonzalez kick flip back fifty down it did he down the rail yeah holy shit it was either it was either David or it was Mark Gonzalez but I'm pretty sure it was David because David's like an animal definitely not Mark Gonzalez yeah it's definitely David then <laughs> it um there was um the the nine year old he uh he board slid the rail. It was like a nine year old or, or like a That's twelve year old that board slid the the rail. I feel like Cody Davis did El Toro board slide at one point. Yeah, Cody Davis, he's uh he's a dude with the blue hair, right? Or he uh, had yeah, blue hair yeah, for yeah. it, yeah. He's yeah. super sick. Yeah, he rips, dude. I used to skate um on world with him. He rips, man. He's been ripping for so long. Yeah, El Toro. He's done some crazy tricks. I yeah, think I've he might him. have board slid it when he was Oh no, you know who I'm thinking of? Hmm. Is um Oh God, forgive me, I can't remember his name now. It's not gonna come to me. David Loy. Da- oh David Loy. David Loy board slid. Dude, El David Loy has got some long legs. <laughs> he's done <laughs> he's some crazy sick. shit on a skateboard. I seen his Battle Scars interview on the barracks. Yeah. He's got some not like the wall ride board slide on like a dumpster thing and he got tossed. Yeah, yeah. Dude, um, David was on Birdhouse when I was. That's sick. You skated yeah. with so much OGs. Yeah. <laughs> Must be nice. Stoked. I did a lot of epic tricks, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. Trips, I'm sorry. And uh, trips. Yeah, thanks, man. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> a back tail on tech, uh, tech 9. Oh, damn. Thanks, that was psychotic. <laughs> I wanted that one so bad because I just had uh, back tail regulars, and I was just like, that rail's perfect because it's like flat and yeah. square, and those stairs are big and scary. But like <laughs> the angle was like perfect to come out of it, you know? Like, yeah. So I did an Ollie No Slide on that too. What Nolly is wrong? Nolly the rail. <laughs> what, what and there wrong? was a tree like growing. We had to like turn <laughs> it back, dude. I remember when they took the tree out, it was like a whole different game, dude. That's how the back tail was possible, was I think they took the tree out. Pretty sure. Because there was a tree really close to that. The stairs are sick, too. I did um front side flip. Jeez, man. <laughs> Perfect stairs, but Trace just like it. hurt. They're like big. The big crack mm-hmm. before the set is the yeah. only thing that messed me up. Yeah. The crack at the bottom was bondo. The yeah, big crack nice. before it threw me off every time. Yeah, dude. Certain and then spots. like if you ollie over that, the um like the little sidewalk piece at the end. Yeah. Um and then you're in the parking lot, there's the grass gap at the end. Oh no shit. Yeah, so like I skated the grass gap too. That's it. So I tried I I think I backside flipped it. I know I kick flipped it. I I went for a backside flip. Hell yeah. But um yeah, that spot's sick. So like if you could hit like the That is a sick spot. I used to tell everyone about it too cuz I was like it's one of those ones that like if you get a trick on it, it's like a banger. It's you know? low key sick. The stairs or the thing. Yeah. That one's a sick one. That's Middletown, right? Yeah. It's like right up in there. Near the YMCA. That's where Skaters Island used to be. That's where it was? Yeah, like kind of near that spot. Damn. That's how I'd ever always find it. Nice. I've lost my Gatorade. Where is it? <laughs> it's got to be over there, my dude. I found <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Um. Top three favorite <clears throat> movies. Skating-wise or non-skating-wise? Non-skating. Damn, that's pretty hard. Um, <clears throat> You're on the spot. Damn. Uh, my o- my old faithful is Forrest Gump. I'll just throw it right there. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Classic. Probably. Ip Man. Ip Man. Ip Man. I P. Oh, okay. M-A. That uh, any a lot of fighting movies. The whole the whole um trilogy. I guess um, it would be more of like um series because it has like four. Oh, sick amazing movie um hustle and flow oh it's about uh do you know that movie yeah i've watched yeah. it before yeah remind me what it was uh the rapper from memphis yeah. uh showing you what memphis life is like and yeah. how it was back then and like memphis rap one of my favorite movies sick that's a good top three yeah and then um who's in that do you remember the actors hustle not and flow? no not the names yeah um, <laughs> i'm gonna look it up while you think but i, I want to actually read that wiki one and see yeah man hustle I think and it's flow got a pretty good actors in it it does i know i know the faces i just don't remember the names like i don't know the names of the actresses and the actors but actually from one of my favorite tv shows z nation the um the the dude that they uh, call shelby i think his name was the 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 skinny white dude that played the piano and okay. like made the beat he was in that tv show z nation oh really which z nation is like the walking dead but a hundred times better <laughs> all right here we go let's see 
This is going to tell me. Hustle Flow is 2005, American drama Jeez. film, written and directed by Craig Brewer and produced by John Singleton and Stephanie Allen. Terrence Howard, that's who's in it. It stars Terrence Howard as a Memphis hustler and pimp who faces his aspirations to become a rapper. It also stars Anthony Anderson, comedian. Tarane Manning. That's who it was. Ludacris. What? <laughs> Luda. Luda. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I got to watch this again because it's been a long time. It's such a sick watch. Yo, yeah. box office, 23.5 mil. That makes sense. <laughs> Yo, guess how much they spent to make Hustle and Flow? Less than a million. 2.8. 2.8 million? Yeah. Then they came. <laughs> that, to come up. that was the budget. I'm assuming that's what they spent. They spent their budget. 116 minutes long. So an hour and a half plus. Sick. It's such a sick movie. All right. So let's recap your top three so far. Hustle and Flow. Mm -hmm. Do it, we have a second one locked in or are we just. It man the whole series. Like it it's man. hard to choose. Like you have to watch no, the whole series. You can't do that. It has to be one movie. So the second. I want to know top three movie. I don't want to know series yet. So this. Take the time. second It Man. The second It Man. Is there a different title? It's just It Man 2. And that's the title? All right. All right. So It Man 2. Hustle and Flow. And then Blood and Bone. Blood and Bone. What's yeah. that one? It's another fighting movie. It's Blood about a... Bone. Uh, it's about a... Um, do you know who Michael J. White is? No. Wait, the he, uh, actor? Yeah. Yeah. He's I a think kung I fu did. artist, too. And What's like, it called again? Blood and Bone. Blood and Bone. <clears throat> Let's see what this is. All right, you give me the take of it. What do you think of it? Blood and Bone? Yeah. Do you so remember like it? A, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. It's got to be true. If you're just top three, you got to have it fresh. Yeah, so it was um, Michael J. White. He um, he was sent to jail, um, and his like one of his best friends died in jail. But he was set up, so he went into jail to figure out about his best friend's um, girlfriend or wife who has a kid. Yeah. Wait, but, he like intentionally got in trouble and went to jail. Yeah, so so <laughs> he went to jail. That's some fucking movie shit. And then became best <laughs> friends with this dude, and oh, but shit. this dude got stabbed to death in like in prison. Fuck. And then when he got out, he he um he went to go find um the dude that died like his what his um girlfriend his baby mama at the time. Yeah. Um, because she had become a junkie and started hanging out with like a pimp and like a gangster, I guess in a way. Yeah. And um, he was a street fighter. And um, the whole movie is him, like, <clears throat> finding where the dude's uh, kid lived. Um, and he paid rent. And he made his money through fighting. And every fight scene is, like, amazing. And he would, like, yes. beat up so much people. <laughs> He'd be, like, he would, like, snap a dude's, like, arm in half. And then, like, the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. He's, you know, no, like. If you look up the fight scenes, you'll you'll want to watch the movie. But the whole time, there's like um, this other gangster, the the dude that um is with the the girl. Dude, Kimbo Slice is in this. Yeah, thing. Bob he Sapp taught too. Yeah, so Michael J. White taught Kimbo Slice how to how to fight in that what? in that in the behind the scenes on that. That's pretty sick. Yeah, so he beat Kimbo Slice's ass. <laughs> He's in the open. It's the opening like the opening scene too. That's it's so like, funny. Yeah, so, like, he meets this, um, like, wannabe, like, hustler, and, um, he, like, gets, like, they do street fights, and this whole time, when he finds the girl, the, the gangster dude gets mad, because he doesn't want him to take her from him, and then, like, there's this, like, um, like, this underground fighting ring, yes. and you have to work your way up, and then you fight this, like, the last dude is, like, the world <laughs> champion underground fighter, and it's to death. No, this is awesome. I dude, like fight movies. <laughs> dude, yeah, I love them. And it's like to death and like a bunch of like Saudi, like a bunch of Saudi Arabian and like um, Egyptian and like all these like rich people watch and bet. Oh, shit. So it's like Michael J. White versus the best fighter. Yes. And um, if he wins, if Michael J. White wins, um, <laughs> then the, the gangster that took the girl gets all of the money. Yeah. So like Michael J. White's like beating this dude up. He has to like forfeit kind of. He like taps can't out. Win. He can't win. He taps out. Dude, this is a plot of some <laughs> sick ass dude, fight movies. He tapped out, so the other dude won. Yeah. And then the gangster that just lost out on all of his money, like, gets mad and grabs a sword and then tries to go kill him. That always happens. 
Revenge, and then Michael, bro. Revenge. He beat his ass with like <laughs> <laughs> with a feather. No, no, that was an Ip Man. Ip Man beats a dude up with a feather, but he gets the sheath of the sword and like beats him up. Yeah. And then makes him cut his own arm, like his own hand off. Oh shit! And Gangsta then, shit. Yeah, and then the That's dude legit. gets arrested from the police because <laughs> the other guy, the guy called with the no p- hand. No, yeah, he gets arrested because oh, right. he's um he has like an illegal uh, drug ring and they he couldn't um, cuff him because he only had. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't even know how they would do that to be honest. But uh, yeah, it was super gnarly. It's such a good movie. And like through it, he um he just reunites this this mother with um the her baby boy, and Nails he kept it. the promise that he made with uh, one of his best friends that what he made a in legend. prison. It's yeah. such a good movie. <laughs> it's such a good movie. Here, here's what the this is the plot from their wiki page. It says, fresh out of prison, highly skilled martial artist and ex marine Isaiah Bone yep. moves to Los Angeles, where underground fights are being held. One night, after watching a match involving local champion Hammerman, Bone makes a deal. <laughs> With promoter pinball to get his <laughs> pinball to yeah. get him into the fight scene for twenty percent of his earnings, forty percent if pinball pinball puts <laughs> his own money on the line. Yeah. At that same night, Bone encounters Ma- Moss Bob, Mob Boss James yeah, and his girlfriend. Bone enters his first underground fight and quickly defeats his opponents with only two tricks. What a <laughs> legend! Pinball explains the Bone that. Angela Angela was previously married. Oh, dude, there's a whole plot line. Yeah, that was the girl that um became addicted to drugs. There's a movie called uh, Blood Sport. I was talking about I've seen about... Blood Sport. Too. Yeah, it was Van Damme. Yeah, it's like a crazy plot line. It's like that, <laughs> you're like, they also he made... gets like a Asian lover and like he, they're stretching his legs with the ropes. <laughs> like... They also made Lady Blood Sport. Lady Blood Sport. I'm pretty sure that's no what it was way. called. You're blowing minds. <laughs> it was like a competition to fight to death, and it was like all female martial arts. Was it a movie? Yeah. Because you never know reality today. <laughs> Lady blood sport. If that exists, I'm going to be amazed. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, so Lady I was blood right. sport. 2015 action drama. Yeah, fighting movies are always the moves. A martial arts champion recruits Jane <clears throat> to complete compete in a vicious all-female <laughs> underground tournament. <laughs> After months of rigorous preparation, the young woman is ready to square off against the world's deadliest fighters. Damn, after months it's... of rigorous <laughs> preparation, she can jump in and fight. Yeah, it's crazy. That's insane. It's so hard because I also want to put Ong Bak 2 up there. What's that one? <clears throat> it's another fighting movie, but They're it's like all hard. Fighting? To... Top 3 is all <clears throat> fighting movies? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it's like, it's hard to explain because it's in another language, but. It's like this village. It's like back back in the day. Like it was a village that got overrated, like overrated that got raided and overran, yeah, and like, like um, taken over. Yeah, <laughs> and like they all got turned to like slaves, and like this Brutal. little kid like gets chucked into like an alligator pit, but he yeah. survives, and then like he grows up to be like a martial artist, and he goes around and like fights the enemy to free people. Dang. And, like, in one of the scenes, he's, like, beating up this, like, group of dudes. And then he, like, punches through a vase and, like, grabs somebody's throat. <laughs> and he, like, twists it upside down, like, shakes oh, it left to right. And then he, like, punches him into, like, into, like, a vat of, like, boiling hot water. <laughs> yes. And it's super, it's super sick. And then another one, he's, like, tied up. And he's got, like, chains and, like, a bunch of, like, ninjas come out. Oh. Like, not ninjas, but, like, warriors. And, yeah, he, like, yeah. he gets whipped with, like, metal chains, but he, like, whoops all of their asses yeah, with, yeah. like, while he's tied up. It's such a good movie. I think I remember seeing, like, that trailer or something when that movie came out. It was crazy looking visually. Yeah, no, it's yeah. super sick. <clears throat> yeah. All fighting movies, because they have the best action. Hell yeah. But I, I watch them, like, uh, with, like, my girl. We watch a lot of, like, romantic movies. But yeah. like even yeah, but like even though some of those are really good, you like a good rom com, yeah, like romantic comedy, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some you know, I'm it's, not shaming you, bro. No, nah, like, dig in with my lady, just get to watch it and just relax, <laughs> y'all. Sleepless in Seattle, is that, <laughs> is that one? I think that's a rom com. Uh, she, we, uh, that's an older one. Tom we Hanks. Watch, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. We watched um a oh, lot yeah. of like super sad ones too, like uh, Five Feet Apart. I love that movie just because. Um, What's that one? It's like um not top three, but what's it's your it's top, top. What's your top three now? Let's round it off again. IP. It man. It man. Um. Number two. Um. That's you have to stress that. Hustle and flow. Hustle and flow. And then blood and bone. Blood and bone. That's a good top three, and your top three can always change. Yeah. But you gotta like assess it in For the like, moment. Top three like romantic movies. <laughs> Just give me one. It's, it's five feet apart. So like, uh, did you know Zach and Cody? 
the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I know of it. What yeah, was that so on? Disney. Disney. Yeah. yeah so I, like, I, I grew up watching that, and I loved them. And like, one of the brothers is as a as a lead, a main character in that movie, and it's about these uh, two people that have CF, which is cystic fibrosis, and um, basically, it's like a disease that like kills your lungs, and you need like lung transplant, and like you have to stay in the hospital. And you have to get, like, a neb, so, you, like, you cough up a bunch of, like, bacteria and stuff, but, like... A little brutal. Yeah, two people um, can't be, like, two... You can... If I had CF and you didn't, I could be around you, but if you had it, too, I can't physically touch you because I don't remember what it is, but that bacteria will go and kill you. If you both have it? Yeah, so the rule is to say stay That's six wild. feet apart. Oh, it's like per- permanent <coughs> COVID from yeah. people. But how do you know? It's not like you wear a jacket that says you got it, you know? You never no. know. You stay in the hospital. Even, like, you just crazy. get hospitalized one day, and they diagnose you. And yeah. then, um, then uh, they fell in love. And, like, um, it's super sad because, like, that it's, like, a whole hospital full of people with CF. And, like, they need, like, lung transplants. And one dude, um, <coughs> Cole, I think, I think it's Cole that played in that movie. He is terminal. So, yeah. like, he can't. He's not going to survive. But he fell in love with this girl. And, like, they, like instead of being six feet apart they stayed five feet apart and like um they they snuck out of the hospital and like ran away and like she needed like a lung transplant that's <coughs> brutal yeah like and this is like like a little bit after one of their best friends had like died on his birthday yeah yeah so this is a romantic comedy yeah <laughs> it's not a romantic comedy it's just it's a just regular romance yeah it's just <laughs> it's sad. sad it's just sad it's like the movie philadelphia that one's pretty brutal I yeah think. man it's just like it's sad shawshank but... redemption i love the shawshank redemption <laughs> it is, i'm kind of into the chair jerkers too yeah you like the green mile then too yo oh, man <laughs> <laughs> broke my heart when i was younger <laughs> you're funny i was like fuck <laughs> i was aggressive i was such an aggressive radio radio was a tear joker for me too was that a football one? Yeah, really? the guy with um special needs. Yeah. And he got bullied for it and then um then he became like a football player like that. When his mom died, that was like damn. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's fucked. It's kinda of what Forrest Gump is for me. Yeah. Jenny. Forrest Gump. It's kinda of tragic. It's yeah, mom. man. There's it's a like, tragedy in it. Yeah, like tear jerkers are definitely good. I can't overdo it though. No. <laughs> I had to stop listening to Tupac for a while. That's my barometer. Like, I had to take a break because I was getting in my feelings <laughs> too much. Me with Rod so Wave. So heavy. You're like, oh. <laughs> he just pulls you into emotion. Yeah, no. I was, I, it's me with Rod Wave. Yeah. <laughs> pop artist? Yeah. So, um, there's actually, like, I have, like, secret, secret um, artists that I listen to for, like, moments like that. Because, yeah. like, that helped me get that emotion out. Because, like. I've noticed, like, when I let emotion out, like, especially, like, if I don't skate and I don't let any emotion out, like, it builds up and it starts to, like, physically hurt. Yeah, yeah. So, like, music, like, is a big part of my life, too. Yeah. So, like, I listen to it and that's what helps me get it out. Hell yeah. I love music. Uh, top three artists. Yeah, so good, dude. What are your top three artists? Of all time? Goats? Yeah. yeah. I'm putting DMX in there. Okay. Rest Just, in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Miss him, love him. Just because, um... The song to his grandmother. Yeah. It was one of the hardest songs. Here, hold on. Even his uh, slipping. Oh, I mean. One and two. Classic. Yeah. But hold on. I'm going to pull it. Dark Man X. Earl Simmons. I miss DMX. Dude, such a legend. I remember DGK posted him because he was rocking DGK on his interview. Yeah. When he did the Christmas special. Dude, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, we got an ad. Sorry. Yeah, dude, that was he's doing Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> it was Dasher and Dancer and Prancer. And <laughs> <laughs> Such a legend. Dude. Dude. Get at me, dog. Dude, <laughs> I love DMX's first two albums. Helped me out so much in life. <laughs> dude, DMX is sick. For real. I really wish he wasn't addicted to drugs, but you know. This one's a smasher. Dude, such a tearjerker in the field. Dude, his voice is perfect too. Yeah. There's a softer side of X. Dude, yeah. He's a poet, dude, for sure. Dude, that's... um a Prophet, too. That's like Vinny Paz for me. Hell yeah, that's sick. Vinny Paz had um struggles with um multiple personality disorder. And he yeah. made a song about it. Yeah. Get it out, work through it. Yeah. yeah. He talks about how like it affects him mentally. But yeah, man. DMX, definitely. He's number one? He's in there. He's in Top there? Top three. If I'm uh, going hip-hop. 
I'm going to put the talking heads in there. What was the question again? Was it top three songs or artists? Artists. I'll put the oh, – this is completely new right now. I'm doing DMX, talking heads, because I've just been in Arcade Fire. I haven't heard of Talking Heads or Arcade Fire. Oh, they're. I feel like Arcade Fire was influenced by the to- Talking Heads. Are they new? Are no, they Talking they're, Heads oh, is they're, old. They're back back in the day. Yeah, yeah. How far back in the day are we talking? Let me pull it up. <laughs> I've just been jamming to them for years, and like, I mean, people out there that know Talking Heads is like, I know the Talking Heads. You might have to put me on to some new music then. Oh, dude, Arcade Fire is epic too. Are they like lyrical, storytelling? Or are uh, they just fun? It's a little bit of everything. It's a little crazy. Bit of everything. Yeah. All right. So, Talking Heads were an American rock band that formed in 1975 in New York City. Okay. David Barnes, lead vocalist. Chris France, drums. Ah, so it's rock music. Yeah. That could be why I didn't know. Tina about Weymouth. It. Yeah, not hip hop. Yeah. Okay. Don't hate me, guys. Tina Weymouth, bass, and Jerry Harrison, keyboards, guitar, describes as one of the most critically acclaimed bands of the 80s. Talking Heads helped okay. pioneer new wave music by combining elements of punk, art, rock, funk, and world music with an anxious, clean-cut image. Okay. Dude, Talking Heads are sick. So or are I'm sick. There's a lot of good ones. I might have to listen to some some rock. Dude, it's good stuff. Uh, and then Arcade Fire, too, is like far. Are they also rock? Um, let me look it up, cause, cause I've just listened to it, but I never really like looked into like the genre or like what they technically are considered. Canadian indie rock band from Montreal, Quebec, consists of husband and wife, Win Butler and Regine. Um, dude, so many good songs though. It's like ridiculous. Let me see. If I can... That's what's up. I've never was into rock growing up. It was always R and B and rap. Nice. So I but, for a long time I only listened to hip hop. Yeah. For like years and years of my life. It was just hip hop for sure. Yeah, I also listened to my my girl, um, she's Mexican, so she put me on a lot more Spanish music. Nice. So, siestas and do, do, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Selena Quintanilla mostly. Nice. That sounded sick. Yeah. <laughs> that an artist? Yeah, she is oh, the most okay. famous, um, I would assume most famous, um, Hispanic or Mexican artist. Nice. And um she got shot by one of her fans. Oh like brutal. Back in like the nineties, I think. No shit. Yeah. But um yeah, she put me on to some Spanish music. I like some, I like to listen to French rap. Don't know what they're saying. Oh, it just sounds cool. I like British rap. <laughs> I got into like some British rap. I found a few artists. I was like, this was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, British, I don't even remember who they are now. But British like, rap. It was I, sick. I listen to a lot of uh, battle rappers, like actual projects. Yeah, like we were talking about can, can I bus, Cannabis. Cannabis, It was yeah. sick because they used to do the ciphers and the battles. And, like, yeah. DMX is in that shit too. It was, it was, it was, what was it? It was him, DMX, Big Pun. Yeah. They all had, it was him, DMX, Big Pun, I think Red Man. Red Man. Red uh, Man's one of the goodest. Dude, yeah, hell yeah. That's so good. Muddy Waters is such a good album. I love that album. Red Man. Damn, Red I listen to that one. We had that one on cassette. I think the cassette was <laughs> red. Yeah. It was like uh, colored cassette. YouTube. <laughs> That's where I find all my music. Yeah, nowadays, right? Yeah. Oh, man. So, who do you think won? Cannabis or LL? Oh man, Can- was that the beef? Was yeah. that the one? Cannabis one. I probably voted cannabis, <laughs> cannabis too. Cannabis one. Because LL, I luck, but I I like, but I never like. I don't know. I missed LL Cool J. People were into it, but I wasn't into it. I don't know. A second round knockout, kind of. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue like he's done like hip hop, but it was like something I missed. Like yeah. he's so I know there's songs that are he's done that are good. You know, like. I listened to his like but responses. I missed, it. I missed yeah. the hype. You know when like certain people like you hit a wave of something. LL yeah. came in probably, but I was like for whatever reason I missed it. I LL was like Wu-Tang. mainstream, like mainstream, mainstream, and cannabis was underground. Yeah, and I was a big. I liked underground more than I liked mainstream. Yeah, when I got into hip hop, it was Wu Tang. That was Wu-Tang? the first like album I got, like our CD. My first Thirty Six uh, Chambers. My first Wu Tang song I heard wasn't um, Cream. It was. Um, what was it? Uh, what's the name of that song? I can't remember now. Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses can't describe how I be dropping these mockery. Oh, what is that called? It's called um. I don't it, know the name. You know what I'm talking about though. Yeah, I do. I know that. I know the verse. 
I bomb atomically. Socrates. I oh, damn. I know the <laughs> album too. I'm trying to remember. It's like uh, intro one. First yeah. album I got was a uh, Thirty Six Chambers though. So sick. Let's see if I can find it. Wu Tang Clan. So, how, every, Triumph. It was called Triumph. Oh yeah, Triumph. What album was that off of? That oh. was they had a double Triumph album, I believe. Uh, that was a banging song, Triumph. Wu Tang Clan. I should probably type in Triumph. It was off of the Wu Tang uh, Forever. Yeah, Wu Tang yeah, Forever. That's Thank you. That's what I was trying to think of. Sick. Yeah. Artists are hard to choose top three. Yeah. I love so that changed because back in the day I'd say like it'd be more hip hop. It used to always just be all hip hop, but and DMX wasn't in there till now. But <laughs> I just had to pick an artist and like DMX hit me. I like I love that guy. Yeah, he seems like someone you'd love. It'd be, Even though like he was really like cool. kind of like had his issues. Yeah, but because you know DMX was real because he made a lot of money and it still didn't solve his problems. <laughs> he would still <laughs> deal with them. Dude, yeah, that's a, that's a lot. He was authentic, you know, like he was himself. Yeah, that's why like his songs were deep. Like he'd have prayers on his albums, and then the next one is like a street anthem, just fucking. Like you could really tell he was struggling a lot. I read his book; it was super good. He wrote a book. Yeah, he has a book. Uh, I don't know what it was called, but I read his book, and he's just basically he grew up. I think in Yonkers, and he would like rob people with uh, his pit bulls, <laughs> like just to get by. He'd, like run their Averex jackets and shit. Cause no, you can't like talk your way out of a dog attack in Yonkers. No, like, not at all. <laughs> there was actually a dog attack in Blood and Bone where they killed an old man. <laughs> oh, dude. No, yeah, no. yeah. It's I'm gonna have to watch that movie. Let you me, should. Let Blood me know. What, yeah, Blood let me know Bone. what you think all about right. it. It's such. It's such a great movie. I love shit like that. Yeah. You ever watch Steven Seagal movies? He, he's like a meme. But, like, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's, like, a mean because he, like, never gets hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's just, like, he'll get shot at by, like, a million bullets and then just shoot somebody once. Yeah. He <laughs> has a whole like... movie where he's on a boat and he's, like, a chef and he's just killing people with knives. <laughs> <laughs> he got a new song called, like, General Commander, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I see, you know, a YouTuber talking about they meme, it. They meme Steven Seagal. Yeah. Some people call me Steven Seagal. <laughs> a lot of this Puerto Rican guys I work with, they go, hey, you're a Steven Seagal, <laughs> like yeah, I guess, I'm, sure. I'm Steven yeah, Seagal. Yeah. <laughs> some karate shit. Yeah, <laughs> I did a little bit of taekwondo. Nice. Yeah, but I, I loved MMA more, MMA and boxing. See. Yeah, so I, I wanted to be a UFC fighter growing up, but then I was like, no, nah, I think I'm a skate. <laughs> yeah, my so. friend Eric Spicely that was in the first All I Need video, he got into them. He got into the UFC. That's super sick. He's still sick. fighting, actually. He is? Yeah, he's doing all types of stuff. He's always traveling and, like, yeah, dude, he was in the first All I Need videos. <laughs> Nolly Hill flips on Providence Crust, dude. He's, like, <laughs> pushing through the city and shit. That reminds me of, um, oh, well, now I'm drawing a blank. Who's the guy from Dumb and Dumber? The Jim Carrey? The other guy. Jeff Daniels. Yeah, he like skated, him. too. Really? Yeah, right? It yeah. was, um... He was talking like it was like front side, front blunt, back blunt, front oh, side. Oh, 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 you're talking about Owen Wilson. <laughs> yeah, Owen Wilson. That's where it was. Yeah, Owen Wilson's gnarly at skating, too. I wonder Dude, why. Dude, at Spice Wonder on Instagram. <laughs> Eric Spicely. Spice Wonder. Former UFC middleweight. What is he now? 13 and 8 pro MMA. UFC. Such Dude. a dope Instagram at Spice Wonder. Yeah, dude, he's had that forever. <laughs> Slovakia, he's in Slovakia. Fight Saturday in Slovakia, train Monday, crash Tuesday. So he's really out here. But boxing expe- a boxing expedition with Slovakia's favorite favorite fighter. Yo, just face beat up. <laughs> brutal one. Yeah, he's been doing it, man. He's my, I met Spicely through my brother. But he just ripped big tray flips, a lot of pop, good nolly heel flip. This is the best way to do him. Yeah, spicy ripped. He still rips, I'm sure. I just haven't seen him in a minute, you know. He probably takes it a little bit easier now that MMA is his career. Yeah, he's probably got to f- manage it somehow, you know. Yeah, I'm still kind of at that age where it's like I can get super fucked, but like I'll be good for work the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still take the punishment. It catches up to me sometimes, though. Like I've demolished my ankle. Yeah. And my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my ribs. It's t- it's definitely takes some brutal slams for sure. 
I got it's on. crazy too because then sometimes you just forget to heal like you just get back I and hate it starts it. to feel better and then you start skating and then you forget it's not fully healed i just hate waiting slam. yeah that's the, the whole thing waiting is so whack <laughs> <laughs> like um so i got on hollow meat for um racking my my ribs on a rail damn hollow meat yeah i have to see this and uh i have to find the i have to find can it can you pull it up yeah right. so uh, if my instagram loads do you think Hall of Meat, if I just, I bet I could just type it in too. Just be like, hey, <laughs> you got Let's the see. clip of uh, old Beanie over here almost breaking his ribcage. Would they, would they put it as the title for your name, Hall of Meat? Was it your full name? Oh, it was on Instagram. Oh, okay. Not you. If it was on YouTube, I'd be famous, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I got on Hall of Meat for Instagram. Oh, it's it on like, their account? Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. So I was put in a little like edit that they made. And I was so happy. <laughs> I was just like, I think it was December. It was it was literally like two weeks before I left for the the army. So it was kind of like, damn, <laughs> I got to like get put on to hollow meat, and I'm doing all this cool stuff, and then I'm leaving for a while, <laughs> and yeah. I won't be able to skate. So it was kind of like, it was kind of like a, damn, that sucks. <laughs> I wish I could like fester <laughs> in the. In the glory. Yeah. At least you survived the slam. <laughs> dude, I got Part up. Part of the game, dude. So, like, I got up, and I literally went. Um, Aud- Audie was filming. It was at Manchester Skate Park in Connecticut. And I got up. Like, I knocked the wind out of myself and everything. So, I ate, like, a like a menthol, like, um, like cough drop to open up my airways. And I ate some Cheerios. <laughs> and then got up and did it again. <laughs> So that, that helped was, you, yeah. Menthols and Cheerios. <laughs> Men- it was a cough drop. A menthol and cough then Cheerios? drop. Cheerios. Yeah. <laughs> weird combo. It was, like, it was my little. It was my um. <laughs> Lucky you weren't throwing up for two weeks. Dude, no. It was. It was my um. <laughs> my little skate. <laughs> I don't even know. Hack. What to say. It's a hack. I was like, I was like, all right. It's hard to breathe. So I was like, I'll just like these cough drops are supposed to open up your airways. No. So I was like, I'll You're just eat there. one. So I opened up my <laughs> airway and then um. And then I was like, I'm kind of hungry, so I just ate some Cheerios nice. and then got up and landed it next try. I just, I kind of got scared, like, so it was like it's a last-second dip, and then, like, I was just like, oh, here's me go, oh, shit, <laughs> and then you just hear me rack my ribs. Do they only show the slam, right, in Hall of Meat? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I remember I submitted it. I su- submitted it. I submitted it a while ago, and... Yeah, what's the verb? Submitting, submitted, password. I sent it in. You sent it in. <laughs> I sent it in a while Full ago. Full sent. Yeah, I I remember it was like a year wait. <laughs> then out of nowhere, it was um sometime in December, I believe. I'm trying to find it off my story archive, but it was like in December. Dang. Then out of absolutely nowhere, it was just like Hollow Meat tagged you in a post, and I was like, "What are you talking about?" Did you get a nice bump? See some followers coming in. Uh, kind of cool when that happens a lot of my homies commented on it <laughs> they're like yeah i know <laughs> i was like thank you it's crazy because it's like hall of meat is on destruction <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> famous a lot of people clips. just watch it to watch it watch the gnarliness i watch hall of meat every skate session like before every yeah it Jesus hypes me up Christ. <laughs> it hypes me up i'm like i'm not right. working that i'm not on that energy <laughs> i was like you know what i can this won't be me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like the Get best way the I can way. explain is like, <laughs> this is not going to be me. I'm going to land all my tricks. And uh, this happening to this fella, unfortunate. That's not happening to I me. I can't. There's so much bad stuff online. Like, I try not to watch it, but there's days where you watch some bad stuff. People <laughs> getting hurt or fighting or doing some stupid shit. You're like, why did I watch that? Dude, like, I love I love watching Hollow Me. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't scare me. Like, I could watch somebody get rocked and then, like, I'll go and skate. And it's just kind of like... Yeah. It, it, I get it. Some people are into it. Like, it just doesn't bother me. Some people get, like, super, super sketched out. Like, I know people, like, that, like, are terrified of skating after watching Hollow Me. Or, like, I'll send them a clip from Hollow Me, and they'll, like, Yeah, I, that doesn't do me it for out. me, but some, day, some days I'll just be like, don't fucking show me that. I want to know if someone got broke off. I kind of want to Don't put it, it in the air. And then other times it doesn't bother me. Some days I'm like, oh, I kind of want to see the carnage. I but like... it's brutal to, nowadays, with, like, phone and internet and all that stuff, it's like you have access to shit like that all the time. It's like... I know. Think I just... about that. Think about how many more, like accidents and fucked up things you watch online than before the internet it was like it's a lot yeah it's everywhere you know but yeah man like I you just, have to show it to me uh i found like a clip that somebody else posted of it so this is the clip oh you did nice yeah this is the clip i feel like i might have seen it <laughs> oh 
<laughs> you just like tripped before you even popped the trick. That was insane. It's like a yeah, it's like one of those small little prefab parks, and right before he goes to the rail, ooh, you hear my chest bounce off. Did you the hit rail. like a rock? Uh, I don't know. You look like you got wheel bite, and you just fell onto the rail <laughs> with your ribs. Ooh, the hard way. Fuck. Yeah, that you was You don't even funny. look like you right there. You look a little different. How Dude, long ago was that? Oh, 2017, I think. That's wild. Yeah, this is a while ago. At least you got on Hall of Meat, you know. Yeah, <laughs> got a little slam recognition. I know. And then like, I tell my, I tell Audie all the time. I was like, even if you don't have like a mainstream, like even if I never get famous, you film something that got on Hall of Meat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you've made it. You, you've <laughs> made it. But um, yeah. Like my most viewed like videos are always me getting hurt. But like I have one video, like one Instagram video that has like 2.8 million views. That's wild. And it's just me doing a fakey tray flip down a seven stair. What? That's crazy. <laughs> it's because the audio I used was funny. Oh, really? What was the audio? I think I I think I think listened to it <laughs> yesterday. What does it say? It was, um... Pull it up. No, pull it up. Pull it up. <laughs> Play it into the mic. It was so funny. Thanks for coming on the podcast, dude. Of course. Thanks for having me, man. I know we have sessions and I film a lot. Like, yeah. But like... Uh... We film a lot of clips together. Yeah, so uh, it's cool to hang out, though. You know? Yeah. It was, uh... Play that audio. <laughs> Who has more pussy than he can handle? Two point seven million views on that is wild. wild. <laughs> Good sense of humor. It, 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 so I was just like I was in Georgia. I was uh, I was in the barracks and I was like, Man, I'm just skating. Let me just post this for fun and yeah. like I was like, Oh huh, it's got like a thousand views in like one day. And then I I'll go to I go we go to our classes. I come back. It's at like fifty thousand views. Yeah, it's like, crazy. What the fuck? Crazy. I was like, imagine my surprise where I've posted banger clips, NBDs, so much, and they get like a couple thousand sometimes. Like my tray flip over tech strong got like seventeen thousand, which I'm grateful for. Cause but like a simple fakey tray flip down like a four or five stair yeah. <laughs> got me two. Point eight million views yeah it got so it went so viral that like people in the barracks found out and i got smoked for it like my my uh my drill sergeants were like they were like oh so you think you're famous <laughs> and i was like no like i was just doing my thing drill sergeant. yeah then they're like where's your helmet and i was like drill sergeant oh, that God. wasn't even on post he goes <laughs> you know the rules <laughs> I was like come on man <laughs> He goes, meet me outside. I was like, okay. <laughs> and we're going to go find our pet rock. And I was like, yeah. It's like, okay. Yes, Joe Sergeant. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, some of like the most viral videos I've been in has been just like other shit besides the tricks. You arguing with the dude. Yeah. That one's heavy. <laughs> Favorite clip. Yeah. I, was, I, I thought you were about ones. to knock him out. <laughs> yeah, but it's just because uh, it's a wider audience. Like, only so many people escape, but so many people are into like crazy random shit you know yeah like a lot of the crazy random shit from street skating goes viral yeah which is crazy i've, I've watched every single skate fail compilation on youtube yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've seen every single skating clip that when people get hurt it's kind of sad <laughs> but it's just like it's what i watch before i go skate a session yeah hell yeah i'll watch like some clips on instagram of like um like yuto yuto chris yeah, jocelyn good. yeah sean chris jordan Justin bunch of good stuff yeah and then i'll watch hollow meat and i'm like sick that's, that's not so gonna crazy. happen to me <laughs> everybody tells me that they call me a psycho because like i'll watch a dude like snap his leg in half and then i'll like go try a trick in fact um you remember at the shred for vents where shred for vets where i did the um like the back boneless to fakey off the off the wall shred for vets where was that edge it, yes yeah, so yeah, i yeah. did it was during the best trick so i watched a video of a guy trying that trick on hollow meat and he like snapped his arm in half and knocked oh himself God, out <laughs> so i was like i was like How you doing yeah i was like i could do this <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it, this i could do that's doable <laughs> and so i just went for it and i landed it and i was like oh shit <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> for you <laughs> yeah. Get the roll away. yeah and i was like that sucks for that guy <laughs> but shit happens. yeah so it's not my it's not my fault <laughs> that's his I, life that's where i get could've a lot of my <laughs> could have been abd yeah that's what i'm saying but you know, I've done the back boneless on it a few times, but I just wanted to do a 180. Yeah. It came out super, super good. And then um, my boy's the Chitus. He filmed that one on the GoPro. 
Oh, dope. So thank you, Zachitis. Hell I hope yeah. you watch this. <laughs> um, hell yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, of course, man. Thanks Fuck for having yeah. me. That and, was super uh, sick. I'll put all your like uh any like your Instagram and stuff in the description so people Word can up. follow, support. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and let's skate. Yeah, I'll show you some skate. spots. Please. Yeah. Saturday and Sundays, like we can try to figure it out. Hit me up and I can meet you. Now that we're connected, we can figure it out. Of yeah. course, man. Hell yeah. Thanks again. All right, of course, yeah. Thank you. Chew, chew. <laughs>